Yes, sir. Yes, 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 yes. Marco. 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 Let's go. Yes, it's that time. Yeehaw. It's bull wrangling time. <laughs> I got to get the bag. Do you like me? <laughs> Make sure you guys thumbs up that stream. Thumbs up that ting. Thumbs up the ting. And uh, let's get back in here and keep doing that thing. That thing thing. So we're back. And it's Wednesday, and boy, oh boy, does it feel like it's been a long time since I've seen y'all. Well, I'm still actually, I can't see you guys. Actually, I lied. You can only see me because this is a one-way thing. Um, but we're here, and we are alive, and we're live, and I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you guys have been good since Saturday. You weren't under my supervision, unfortunately, so uh, I wasn't able to, you know, use my emperor's wisdom to watch over you and take care of you and all that so just just wanted to make sure just wanted to check in with y'all let's see we have a bunch of members we love to see that we love to see that you guys are the best uh supportive amazing beautiful peoples uh thumbs up the ting definitely and let's see what y'all saying benjamin it must be me sam stark dylan honey i'm proving to you this is live right now Jimmy Moon, Dana Rose, Shadow, Jordan Tupper, Connor, Lily Lucky, Damian, Bug, Elizabeth White, Ed, Freaky Juice, Jared, Sweet Goth, Colin, There Is No Spoon, Root Into Being, Damian, Rare Schnub, Sila, so many people, so many people, Straw Babies, Trey Tino, Jacob, Max, it keeps going and going and we'll never stop till they kill us. Speaking of them killing us, um, as you guys know, I was re I received a cease and desist letter from Primerica a few weeks ago because they caught wind that I was working on a video about them, which I have been working on since January of this year. And they sent me a cease and desist letter saying that I have defamed them and that I have violated their copyright by using their logo in different YouTube thumbnails for the multi-level misery episodes that featured people who used to be in Primerica. They gave me less than one day. They sent it to me on April 14th, I believe, and I had until the end of day, April 14th, to take the video down, or they said we are prepared to do whatever we need to do to protect our client Primerica, including litigation, blah, 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 blah. So I obviously did not, I did not uh, comply with their cease and desist. And they have yet to send me any further, you know, action. I haven't, uh, to be fair, I, I, you know, I'm not going to say too much about it. But yeah, they have, um, they haven't sent me anything else. But I've been looking at what my options are if I do get sued again. And so, what up, Tasha? I've been looking at what my options are. Your options are to thumbs up the stream. Thumbs up the team. I've been looking at what my options are regarding if I do get sued because I, I don't want to do the same thing that I did back in 2021 where I spent all my money on legal fees and it didn't even end up, you know, getting me the result that I wanted. So that being said, I went down to the courthouse here in Edmonton uh, yesterday, I think. It was either yesterday or the day before. Actually, yesterday morning. I went down there and, you know, they have services that, they have services that assist you with if you are needing legal advice and these are like free services that you can get. You can get like a free consultation for X amount of time, whatever. And I went and I've just been doing the research on like what are, what is the, what are my options? And I also spent all day on Friday or no, Saturday. I spent all day, all day sending out emails to different law firms that might be interested in a case like this 
um, seeing who I could hire in like a limited scope basis, meaning they don't do everything. I do some stuff. Uh, they help me. And uh, who might do it pro bono, which means free, etc. So I did hear back from a couple law firms locally who actually said that they have seen my content and they're fans, which is amazing because, you know, helps to have people who support you who are uh, in a position to help in case something like that happens. So, but that being said, you know, the first time, the first time I did this back in 2021, just the retainer was $10,000, just the retainer. So, and at that time, that was like all the money that I had. I had worked that whole year and like for the first time in my life, had no debt and like been saving and had $10,000. And then I had to hire a lawyer and I spent the 10 K and da, 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 da. So I don't want to do that again. I can't afford to do that again. So some of the lawyers who reached back out to me who were willing to help said, uh, they could help me in a limited scope basis, which would basically mean that I would represent myself, but I would be able to have the you know a lawyer look over all the documents make sure everything was filed correctly ask any questions that i have over the phone and basically just like be there to assist me in a limited capacity but even that even that while it wouldn't be 10 grand it would still be a couple grand the guy on the phone quoted me $2500 now granted i haven't been sued yet and also if i do get sued I can only imagine that that 2,500 is going to stretch so far. So if I do get sued, you know, that 2,500 might be like a conservative estimate. So it ain't 10 K, which is good news, but still a chunk of change. So if y'all want to support me, thumbs up that stream. If you want to donate, hit the Streamlabs link. That's the pinned comment in the chat. Consider becoming a member on the channel. Uh, you get your name in green. I don't know how it looks on the phone. You might have different phones, but your name stands out in the chat and you have a little icon next to your name and you get access to the custom emojis in the chat that only members get. You could join the memberships uh, either on this live page in the chat or on my YouTube main page of, of my channel. Or you can join the Patreon for as little as $1 a month, get access to all the new content early, uh, posts that I don't make anywhere else, etc., etc. You could go to alwaysmarcomerch.com. I'm wearing that navy blue anti-pyramid tee right now. Very comfortable, very soft. It's summertime. It's heating up. You need something light. Here we go. Good quality. It's hugging my arms right now because your boy been in the gym crazy. Marco! I'm not a loser. And, uh, yeah, if you want to support the boy, consider doing it. Really appreciate you guys. My hair is finally back to a length that I'm used to. Got a fresh, crispy, crispy, super crispy lineup yesterday. Beautiful haircut. Wow, amazing. So, uh, yeah, appreciate y'all. What up, Beyond? What up, EXPFC Wintergreen? What up, Rebecca? What up, Hall? What up, Lisa? What up, Kilakina? Yes, sir. Appreciate you guys. Thumbs up the stream. Almost 137 watching, but only 93 likes. Doesn't make sense. Canada does not have anti slap laws. I think only in British Columbia do they have anti-slap laws? And I live in Alberta, and we do not, so unfortunately, but what can you do? So, yeah, appreciate y'all being here, man. We're going to look at this company. Is there anything else I wanted to bring up? What up, Zorzin? Um, so we're going to look at this company called Family First Life, and the reason we're going to look at this is because this is another insurance-based multi-level marketing company uh, you know, like I, I use the word like, not to say that they are similar in every way, but they are like WFG, Primerica, and uh, what was the one? PHP, people helping people, people helping Patrick, really, because Patrick but David owns it and he's the one who, you know, made the bread off of it. But it's similar in that they are all centered around insurance. Uh, there are, you know, there are different things that set it apart though. So people requested that I check out this company, FFL or Family First Life, because they wanted to see how does it stand up to 
other MLM companies. And you know what's beautiful is literally, by the way, um, I want to shout out somebody who just sent me this on Instagram, my boy Tommy. Dude, so Tommy on Instagram, I'm going to shout him out if you don't mind, Tommy. Tommy Modek, M-O-D-E-C on Instagram. This guy is an actual finance guy, actual financial advisor, and he has he has dropped some game on me in my Instagram DMs. And when I posted that I was doing this live stream talking about Family First Life, right before I went live, he sends me a link to a podcast episode, which is between the CEO of Family First Life and none other than Ray Higdon. And you know what's really impressive about that? Is it came out, sorry, it's not even out. So how Tommy got this, I have no idea. It was uploaded, let me show you. It was uploaded, holy, I'm way too big on the screen, all good, let me move me. It, God damn, wrong one, wrong one, my bad. It was uploaded, um, it was uploaded six hours ago, okay? Um, six hours ago and it's unlisted and it's from the Punch Me In The Face podcast. That's the name of the podcast. I do not know how he found it, um, but you know, that's pretty impressive. That's pretty insane. So thank you for sending me that, Tommy. Okay, let's get into it. First, uh, what's up, you guys in the chat? Appreciate you, Jared, dropping the link. Uh, Strawberry says, the merch is actually fab. I have the cult member t-shirt and it's dope. Thank you, Strawberries. By the way, I'm going to go ahead and ask you guys in the chat, specifically uh, the ladies. What's going on? Because I be seeing comments sometimes on my Instagram or on the chat or just like comments posted to videos talking about Marco is fine. Marco is this. Marco is that. And you know what's crazy is I don't get no DMs. No, me no nothing, no emails, no. <laughs> so I don't know, is some game? This is some game that y'all are playing? But uh, all right, all right. If that's how it's gonna be, stop. Okay, Let I don't even know where to start. I have so many different uh, things open for Family First Life. I think the first thing we should look at is this. This is one of the, this is actually the first thing I came across when I searched family first life income disclosure. It was this. This is, God damn it. This is a cease and desist letter. I don't, I didn't even know that the FTC did this, bro. I thought the FTC just jumped straight into action. This is a cease and desist letter from the FTC to the CEO of family first life from December, 2021. So end of the year 2021, so just over a year ago, a year and a half ago. And it says, uh, earnings claims related to coronavirus disease 2019. Dear Mr. Meek, Mike, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. My apologies. This is to advise you the FTC staff has reviewed social media posts made by FFL business opportunity participants or representatives in December 2021. So just in that month, take that in. This is sent at the, on December 27. <laughs> Ain't no Christmas break for the FTC. They're going in on your ass. All right, so let's see what they said. Um, we have determined that FFL is unlawfully misrepresenting that consumers who become Family First Life business opportunity participants are likely to earn substantial income. Think about that for a moment. It is, it is an unlawful misrepresentation. For in Family First Life, it is considered an unlawful misrepresentation to just to even say that participants are likely to earn substantial income. Think about that for a second. Let this let this um you know set the tone, set the stage. All right. Here we go. Um, some examples of earnings claims made by your business opportunity participants or reps include, quote, make your weekly salary in one day as an agent with FFL. What was your biggest paycheck in a month? Last month, I checked on mine and it was like 40K in a month. 
What attracted you to the insurance business? I think it was like a combination of multiple things. I was really burned out with COVID stuff, working at a hospital and my upline, I met him and he was making some money, really good money. And I just didn't really have anything to lose at that point. So I was just kind of like, let's do it. Posted to TikTok by Win with FFL on July 2021. Okay, sorry. So these uh these claims these claims have been made over the course of some time, not just in uh not just in December. I, I stand corrected. Here's another one. I've been with FFL for full th three full months. Okay, before joining Family First Life, I was a nurse for seven years. Okay, um, COVID hit. I have a five year old son with cystic fibrosis. He, his pulmonologist took me away from patient care. So I was kind of home all the time and it just wasn't the same. So I found FFL, jumped on board. Since jumping on board, it's changed my life, my family's financial situation. Last month, I did $46,000 issue pay. One month, y'all. That's insane. So if you're a hard worker, if you're young, if you're energetic, if you're looking for a change and want financial freedom, oh, there's the buzzword. Hashtag financial freedom. Or let me know. Hashtag financial freedom. Posted by Megan Adams, by Meg Han Adams on June 5th. I mean, there's more representations about a business opportunity, including earnings claims, violate Section 5 of the FTC Act if they are false, misleading, or unsubstantiated and material to consumers. Express and implied earnings claims must be truthful and non-misleading to avoid being deceptive. So there you go. Which means that claims about the potential to achieve a wealthy lifestyle, career-level income, or significant income are false or misleading if business opportunity participants generally do not achieve such results. Even truthful testimonials from participants who do earn significant income or more will likely be misleading unless the advertising also makes clear the amount earned or lost by most participants. And of course, no, you know, no MLM I've ever studied does that. So this is crazy that they sent a cease and desist letter Within 48 hours, please send a response to Katie Daffin. Shout out to Katie Daffin. I met Katie Daffin at the, um, she was a speaker at the conference that happened in March. So shout out to Katie Daffin. She seems like a person who really cares about this, uh, this type of stuff. And she's been with the FTC quite some time. Um, Engaging in this conduct described in the notices could subject you to civil penalties of up to $43,000 per violation. So just the three different posts that they quoted in this cease and desist letter could have netted them, let's see, 43,000 times three. Math isn't my strong suit. Let me pull up, pull up the calculator. Let's see. Let's do the math. Four, three. What was the number? Seven, nine, two times three. A hundred and thirty-one thousand dollars. Just those three could have earned them a hundred and thirty some thousand dollars in fines. So that being said, let's see what FFL is talking about these days. Let me look at the chat right quick too. Also, thumbs up the stream, you guys. One hundred and sixty watching, only one hundred and twelve likes. Fix it, fix it. Thumbs up the team. Let me read your comments here. <clears throat> Here we go. You saying you want us in the DMs. What if we don't have Insta? Y'all got to figure it out. Um, as a woman, I assume you get plenty of DMs, says the Sora Gaming. <clears throat> Thirsty, says the Sora Gaming. Um, you assume I get plenty of DMs? I do get plenty of DMs. Don't get me wrong. But most of the DMs I get are like, hey, have you heard of this company? Hey, check out this company. Hey, I have a crazy story about this company. It ain't like, it ain't like that though. You know what I mean? All right, let's see. To be fair, Marco, a lot of those Marco is daddy posts are me. Appreciate that, Trey Tino. Appreciate you uh, waking me up from my delusion here. Um, eggplant fool. Dana Rose, join the cult. Welcome, Dana. Thank you. We love to see that. Thank you, Dana. Welcome. Eggplant Fool says, Marco, I'm an Ontario litigator and a fan of your channel. I don't handle defamation claims, but I can probably assist your legal counsel with a little research and whatnot. Eggplant Fool, don't play with me because I will take you up on that. Eggplant Fool, if you will message me, if you would message me on Instagram, bro, and tell me, um, basically say what you just said, I would love to consult with you 
Here we go. Um, let's see. I'm reading your guys' comments. Hold on. Appreciate you, Eggplant Fool. You should have been subscribed, Eggplant Fool. It's because you ain't packing meat, says Nakama Hockey. There you go. Fair enough. Don't invite parasocial relationships. There's a recent reason I am a cartoon. Who 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 said parasocial? Who said who said anything about parasocial? <laughs> so stupid. Okay. Um, let me keep reading. Would you move to Switzerland? I don't know. Do, do they have anti-slap measures there for lawsuits? You know? What up, Devin Kelly? I put an MLM mechanic in my video game. Nice. I love that. Um, all right. Let's, what, what was the next shit I was about to look at? Okay, here we go. Moving on. Here we go. This is from the website Family First Life Motion. I believe this is, I'm not sure if this is an official Family First Life website, but it looks, you know, it's pretty in-depth about Family First Life. Bonus program. All right, this is what I need. I'm going to need. By the way, we're going to have a gentleman come on uh, via Zoom in a little bit to explain why Family First Life is great. But first, I wanted to watch this video of their CEO, Sean, talking about Family First Life. This is a 2021 overview, also unlisted, which I got from that site. So I don't know why it's unlisted. I'll tell you why. I'm guessing January 30th. So this was only this came out only a few days. This was uploaded only a few days after that cease and desist letter from the FTC. I'm guessing the reason it's unlisted is because it has some of those claims that uh, they, you know, you know, that were mentioned in the, uh, you know, cease and desist letter. Let's see. Scott Schaefer dropped a bag. Marco farming his chat. So true. Thank you, uh, Scott Schaefer. Appreciate you. All right. Let's check it out. Here we go. This is agency overview. I'm going to put it on 1.5 speed to get through it. A company that has created a system. Whoa, whoa. I want to share with you a company that has created a system that is helping brand new sales reps earn 20000 a month within 90 days. Okay. This company so literally within the first 10 seconds, I was right. It's making... What the fuck was that number? 40,000 in 90 days? System that is helping brand new sales reps earn 20,000 a month within 90 days. 20,000 a month? <laughs> within 90 days. Shut the fuck up. All right, let's check it out. This company is Oh, we got a donation too. My, my bad. Why do I not have the donations active on this page? They should have been. It's my fault. Let me rewind. Thank you for the dono from... I, I suck at this. I suck at YouTube. All right, here we go. Tip history. Kilakina, $5 said, keep fighting keep fighting the fight, Marco. Thank you, Kilakina. I appreciate you for supporting me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, let's continue. First life. Let me read this. Sean Meek. Look at that little Dennis the Menace grin there. Looking like, looking like you just ate the chocolate you knew you wasn't supposed to eat. Ladies Paying in the chat. The simp tax. Thank you. We love that syntax. Thank you so much. Let me go ahead and see who that was. Y'all playing with me. You guys play with me way too much. All right, let's see. Who was that? Who was that? Mm, no, no ID associated with that. Top secret. That was a top secret. Sneaky, sneaky slide. All right. Scott, you are a cutie. Totally. All right. So this says, Sean, president and CEO. Personally issued over 800K in a calendar year. Agency of 42 agents issuing 850K per month. Had a mission to change the entire insurance industry. MLM folks always claim that they are revolutionizing whatever uh, industry, like whatever product it is they're selling industry. Like skincare MLMs love to say we're revolutionizing skincare because they turned it into a pyramid scheme. Uh, same thing with these insurance ones, in my opinion. Quote, my goal is to have an army of men and women who have bigger bank accounts than any agents in the history of this industry. All right, let's keep, let's check it out. Let's give them a shot. FFL was created in, created in 20, all right, here we go. December of 2013 by agents for agents. 
This is our president and CEO, Sean Mike. What makes Sean different than Sean most Mike. president and CEOs is that Sean sold insurance at a very, very high level. He was personally issue paying over 800,000 in a calendar year. He also had an agency of 42 agents doing 850,000 a month. His mission is to change the entire insurance industry. Sean said, my goal is to have an army of men and women who have bigger bank accounts than any agents in the history of this industry. Now, with that in mind, let's meet some of the agents. Nina's 25, former personal trainer, and this year she'll make over 400,000. This 20 video is so fucking cap. Seven, former network and digital marketer, and now earns 30,000 a month. Brandon is former four network. And, hold up. Former network and digital marker, uh, marketer. Bro, if you're in FFL, you still in, you still are a network marketer. Brandon is 40, former banker with six kids and now consistently makes $40,000 a month. Genevieve is 29. She played Division I basketball and was going into the medical field until she saw the freedom that she could create by having her own business. Yeah, D D1 women's basketball, you might, she was, just say she was homeless, bro. <laughs> now she earns more than doctors, and in her first year, she made $400,000. Bullshit! <laughs> How can y'all bullshit this hard straight out the gate? This is craziness. Teresa is 62. She worked in the restaurant business for decades and now earns over $430,000 a year. Now, you might be wondering, that sounds great and all, but can it really work for the normal person like me? Fuck no, it can't work. You know what? Let me check something out. I've been meaning to ask ChatGPT this. Let me ask a new ChatGPT. I got to ask something. All right, let me ask ChatGPT this. What is the average income of insurance brokers in North America? Can vary widely, blah, blah, blah. According to the U.S. Labor St Bureau of Labor Statistics, as of May 2020, the median annual wage for insurance sales agents was 52000 But it's important to know this figure can vary widely depending on a number, a number of factors, including the brokers. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. What if I change the question to say independent? Like they're just moving solo dolo out here with their license of independent. It's going to say the same shit. 145,000. So according to a survey by the Independent Insurance Agents and Brokers of America, the average income was 148,000. But according to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics in 2020, it was 52,000. So yeah, they weren't lying when they said it varies. But bro, let's let's even say it's let's even say it's 60,000. Let's even say it was 60,000. You know, I'm adding 8k on top out of out of my ass. Well, already this uh, FFL video we're watching, where motherfuckers are making 400k their first year and shit, is already way, way, way too uh, way too high. You know? So anyways, let's let's check it. Um I'm reading your comments real quick. Please report this to the FTC. Uh, they already got the fucking cease and desist letter. I sh I should do it again, LOL. Um All right, 200 people watching, 130 likes. Fix it. Fix it. Let's keep going. What about someone who has never been in sales before? The answer to that question is yes. I once heard billionaire Mark Cuban say anytime he enters an industry that has been doing the same things. For Bro, this is so fucking crazy. Dude, this shit will drive you crazy. Do you guys remember in my ACN video, Nathan brings up these examples and he says, biggest retailer in the world, Amazon. Biggest taxi service, Uber. Biggest hotel, Airbnb. None of them make anything. They just facilitate services. They empower people to do their own thing, blah, blah, blah. Amazon has no stores. Uber has no cars. Airbnb has no hotels. And then he claimed that ACN was doing the same thing, but using people's phone bills and electric and blah, blah, blah. Why is it that all of these companies, hey, man, actually, I'm asking a rhetorical question. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why all these MLM companies pitch the idea that they are in some way revolutionizing some shit. The reason is because of the big lie. 
Now, if you haven't seen my interview with Robert Fitzpatrick and you haven't watched Ponzi or you haven't read Ponzi-nomics or listened to the audiobook, you can buy it. There's an Amazon affiliate link in my description uh, that you can get the book or the audiobook. But if you haven't seen that interview with Robert, go watch it on my channel. I have chapters there so you can find the part that talks about the big lie. What is the big lie? Here we go. The big lie. I'm going to read it as exactly. Um, here we go. The big lie. I, I'm, I'm trying to. I'm trying to do a big uh, reveal in case people. Um, in case people haven't read Ponzinomics or seen that interview yet, I'm trying to. I'm trying to have the have a punchline. Okay, here we go. The big lie is a gross distortion or misrepresentation of the truth used especially as a propaganda technique. It describes a lie so colossal that no one would believe that someone could have the impudence to distort the truth so infamously. And this expression, the big lie, was coined by a guy who you may recognize in his book, which translates to my struggle. The book was Mein Kampf and the author, you already know. And this was the propaganda technique, one of the propaganda techniques that was so important in what Hitler did. I don't need to give you guys a fucking World War II history lesson. You already know that there was a gross uh, twisting of reality that allowed people to dehumanize other people and you know believe that what they were doing was for for good the big lie i think when it comes to mlm is so gargantuan and so like encompassing of so many different factors this is just one of them this diagram that you see in here this is just one of them where they're talking about how we're disrupting the market we're revolutionizing the industry this is, make no mistake, a big lie. This is such a ridiculous comparison to make that it almost seems like you have to hear it out. I got to hear him out. Family First Life is to the insurance industry what Amazon and Uber are to the retail industry and taxi industry. I got to hear this out. Of course, any person who listens to their intuition would know this is fucking nonsense. <laughs> absolute nonsense of an indescribable degree. And now imagine how much even more pressured you would feel to hear this out if you were witnessing this information being presented to you at some rented mansion or penthouse like in the ACN video with Nathan. And it's a bunch of young, you know, first year college age kids being presented. And there's already a bunch of plants in the audience clapping and cheering. And there's some charismatic, handsome dude at the front of the room presenting this like it's going to be the thing to change their life. There's so many layers that go into deceiving people about multi-level marketing and them trying to convince you that it's a good idea. It's absolutely insane. Where's the interview video from my trip to DC? It hasn't come out yet, but rest assured, that's coming. Cat the Barber, thank you for the donation, Cat the Barber. She said... Or I'm assuming the gender. Cat the barber. Uh, could be a dude. Appreciate you, Cat. I hung out with my friend who is in three MLMs yesterday. Made me so sad. She's funding it with her J-O-B and has no idea she's hemorrhaging money. God, that, she's in three different MLMs at the same time, bro. I'm pretty sure each of those companies has some sort of non-compete agreement that she signed when she joined that says you can't be working for another MLM at the same time. Sheila, this video came out you know, was produced earlier than the FTC's letter, which is why I'm guessing the video is unlisted. I'm sure people are still sharing this shit, but what can you do? All right. Here we go. Flashing back to an IML mansion presentation I was invited to. Insane. All right, let's keep going through this overview. 
for many years, he does the exact opposite to disrupt the entire industry. In the last few years, we've had a handful of companies who've been able to do this. Think about how Netflix disrupted the movie rental industry. Think about how Airbnb disrupted the hotel and hospitality industry. Think about how Uber and Lyft disrupted the taxi industry. Think about how Amazon disrupted the retail industry. When it comes to insurance, I want you to think about Family First Life. When the entire industry does things one way, we do the exact opposite. That is why we're known as the rogue IMO. That is why we are the insurance disruptor. That's right, and we're known as the rogue IMO. Shut the fuck up. When evaluating which IMO you should put your reputation with, you should- IMOs are like the different insurance, uh, whatever you call them, issuers. You should always evaluate these seven things. Number one, compensation. First of all, anyone that tells you compensation isn't important is lying to you. If you and I both sold the same policy to the same clientele with the same carrier and the same product, but you made $1,200 and I made $400, that's bogus. Most IMOs have starting comps of 25, 35, 45, 55% comp and max you out at 100 or 110. At Family First Life, we start agents at a 90 and our top comp is a 145. Number two, renewals. In this industry, there are a lot of companies that don't pay renewals or you have to work at that company for 5, 7, 10, 15 years until your renewals come in. At Family First Life, you're vested day one. What does that mean? It means that there's no waiting period. Your renewals count right away. You're vested day one. Number three, the average agent income. Limra does the statistics for the entire industry. The average agent in the life insurance industry does 43,000 a year. The average agent at Family First Life does 174,000. That has to be a lie. That has to be a lie. For the same year. How do we have such a high average? Because of the next two points I'm going to make. Number four, training. Other IMOs have people who haven't been in the field for years try to teach you how to sell insurance. Or you have to pay top dollar for new agent training. Or even worse, some agents actually make you make a list of friends and family, and then they sell your friends and family as your quote unquote training fee. I like how in this, they don't mention that FFL sells leads. Sure, the training is free, quote unquote, but the training is free in every MLM. Those Zoom calls that you're dedicating your fucking free time to every single day. Those are technically free in most cases. Uh, but in all the reviews I found of Family First Life, they talk about the constant demand for leads, leads, leads. See, look, 15, the next point, five leads. No leads, recycled leads in everyone else's company. But in FFL, there's 15 plus exclusive lead vendors. Vendor means they sell it, meaning you buy it. Here at Family First Life, we don't believe in any of that. We have training events, boot camps, online training, all held by agents who write 20, 30, 40, 50 grand plus a month. And they'll show you how to sell insurance for free. All our training events are also free. The regional trainings, the national convention cost tons of money to operate. But here at FFL, you pay $0 to attend our trainings. Number five, leads. How you generate business is very important as well. Leads are the potential clients who have filled out forms asking for help in life insurance. Most places that have leads, however, sell your recycled leads who have been given to 10, 15, 20 other agents. Or worse yet, they don't have leads and they make you make a list of friends and family to sell insurance to. If that's their business model, you should run away as fast as you can. You can't sell your aunt and uncle an insurance policy every single week. You eventually run out. At Family First Life, you don't have to do that. We have 15 to 20 lead vendors that will have exclusive programs with to help you generate business. That's so nonsense to me. How could that even be fucking possible? Real, real question. How could that, how could there be 15 different sellers of leads information of people? <laughs> it defies math. There's 15 different lead vendors who are selling the contact information of people who are ready to purchase insurance. And those people are just sitting by the phone waiting for your call after you purchase their phone number. Complete fucking nonsense, bro. It is 2023. You can get insurance online. That is, to me, super red flag. So ask yourself this. What is easier to sell? Your Uncle Bob who doesn't want to buy any insurance or your client Mary who filled out a form asking for help in regards to life? Nonsense. Devin, thank you. Thank you for making me aware of the big lie because I felt so alone. I'm currently, and I lost it. I lost it because it went away. I'll find it. Devin, thank you for making me aware of the big lie because I felt so alone. I'm currently suing someone who tells such crazy lies that no one believes me at first. It took me months to secure a lawyer. It's like the final boss of lying. That's insane. There are people out here who are pathological liars, bro. Try dating one. It's insane. All right. All right, I'm, I'm reading you guys as a... Uh, any luck with the gym? Dude, I've been seeing my boy Jarek from WFG at the gym. They, I guess, 
have decided not to terminate his membership, even though he was in there lying on me. But uh, I've seen him there. He hasn't said shit to me. So, you know, again, like I like I've mentioned in my videos, these people who scam, it's they are cowards. It's pure cowardice. They won't even fucking come up to me at the gym and say something to me. But they'll go and make up fake stories and tattletale to the gym manager saying that I did something to him. Fucking <laughs> grown ass men is insane. Uh, all right. Let me see. Selling weeds like Peter Mingles, yep. Yeah, who's out here filling out a form being like, I'd like insurance just so that form can be sent to someone selling it. Like, bro, what an ancient way of doing business, bro. Makes no sense. Makes no fucking sense. Which is why the Amazon Uber comparison is so ridiculous. Like, with, um, for example, I made this point in my ACN video. There's, re there's a real good reason my ACN video is my most viewed video ever, bro. It's so fucking surgical. In my ACN video, I talk about how how, how could they make the comparison that ACN is like Amazon and Uber? How could Nathan say that when there has never been like a precedent for me to go to a store to pay my phone bill? As long as I've even had a fucking cell phone, you know, and before I even had a cell phone, people were paying their phone bills online or prior to that by calling their company and making the payment over the phone. Who the fuck is out here going to a... Uh, a physical store to pay their phone bill. It was never that way. So the idea that, you know, uh, like Amazon actually did utilize technology to revolutionize the way people go and buy things. So <laughs> just mad maddening life insurance. God this is why did. we have agents. God damn. Buy yourself something nice winking face. God damn sugar mama. Who is Sugar Mama? Who is Sugar Mama? Thank you. Buy myself something nice. Yeah, buy myself a fucking lawyer. That's what I'm gonna buy. <laughs> Thank you, Sugar Mama. Wow, I appreciate you. Sugar Mama been lifting me up high, high, high above her shoulders these past few months for real, and I appreciate that, Sugar Mama. Damn. That's amazing. Thank you, guys. If you want to support me, Streamlabs ain't gonna chat. Patreon membership, blah 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 blah. Appreciate you. All right, let's keep going. Um, can you trying to drop a bag, Benjamin? Drop that bag. No, it wasn't Dan at uh, uh, at the gym. It was Jarek. But by the way, they still been reporting my videos on TikTok. I had to for every single one of my TikToks that was a clip from that WFG Part Four video. Every single one. I got a notification on TikTok saying, viewers have reported this, confirmed by this date whether or not this video is branded content. Like, y'all are reporting it for branded content? Pussy? Of course, I said no to all of them, but still, bro. Just funny how that, the games they play, you know. Boris says, the tech companies listed in the comparison automate a lot of the human aspect. This company literally does the opposite by introducing more people into the business. Lumfau. Exactly, Boris. I mean, it's going backwards. You know what was a revolutionary thing for the insurance industry? The internet. The telephone. By doing this direct sales model where you're buying leads is so, like, you're literally going back in time, bro. And also inefficient. So true. Oh, I'd get some DMs if I wore the cowboy hat. Dude. I keep thinking of the cowboy hat. I keep thinking of the cowboy hat and then just forgetting because I get a letter from Primerica. I'm working on the video. Some, some other shit happens and the, the, let me write that. Let me go ahead and write that down. Get cowboy hat. I'm gonna write it down right now. Order cowboy hat. Boom. Thank you for reminding me guys. Appreciate that. All right, here we go. Let's check it. 
you do 150,000 a year compared to the national average of 43,000 a year in the industry. Number six, being independent. At FFL, you are truly independent. Most people will tell you that you're independent until you try to leave. They'll hold your contract hostage for about six months. At FFL, we don't hold any contracts. We don't even have you sign contracts. You can leave whenever you choose, which leads to my next point. Number seven, no contracts and no fees. Most of these other places will have you pay money to join the company. With Family First Life, there is... Yeah, okay, you don't have to pay to join, but look at these leads, bro. The fuck? Also, independent. If you were truly... I know they use it like it's a good thing, but bro, if you were in such a difficult industry as insurance and sales, wouldn't you want to not be independent? Meaning, wouldn't you want to have some support, like some company support? I don't know. No initiation fee. We believe we're so good that we should earn your business month in and month out. So you might be thinking, all right, I get it. You guys are the rogue IMO, but show me some numbers. What have you guys Here we done? Go. Any chart that goes up and to the right is usually good, unless it's your weight or your cholesterol levels, right? But let's see what the company has done in the past. The first year our company was opened in 2014, we issued paid $22 million. 2015, $57 million. 2016, $80 million. 2017, $100 million. 2018, 164. 2019, 212. If that's true, imagine how much they're making at the top. 2020, we issue paid. Imagine the total revenue. $43 million alone. That's almost more than our second year in business. So Family First Life issued paid $325 million. How much did the agents get paid? Well, in 2018, we had 12 people. Oh, that's just how much they issued in like insurance claims. Okay, so that's not how much they made. Clear our Hall of Fame mark, which is 400000 on their own personal pen. 12 people. In 2019, 25. Hold up, bro. Rewind. This video is a red walking red flag. Hall of Fame mark, which is 400,000 on their own personal pens get paid. Well, in 2018, we had 12 people clear our Hall of Fame mark, which is 400,000. 12 people made 400K or more. This is consistent with the MLM figures of 99% losing, my boy. Let's see. On their own personal pen. Multiple made over a million on their own pen selling insurance and 59 people joined our Hall of Fame, okay? 12 people. In 2019, 25. In 2020, 59 people cleared the prestigious Hall of Fame mark wow. by selling over $400,000 worth of life insurance by themselves. This year, we had three agents who did over a million dollars worth of life insurance business on their own pen. Not t So it's confusing to me. How are they quantifying that? Is it three million people who paid, like three different people who paid out a million or more in like damages, in claims, or, you know total policy amount paid by the customer like how much commission did people make answer me that be specific team volume personal volume what by themselves this year we had three agents who did over a million dollars worth of life insurance business on their own pen not team volume personal volume okay so who are we partnered with we were of course we already know where they just sell final expense or just sell mortgage protection or just sell annuities. We are a full service IMO. We do it all. In okay. With all these niche areas that we protect clients, we have leads in those areas too. We talked earlier about how leads are vital. Here we go. Here we go. Here's where the money comes in. Here's where they're going to get you saving on those uh, sign up fees. Facebook final expense leads generated through Facebook and our social media, 15 to $25 per lead. Internet leads. For life insurance captured through many websites, one to eleven dollars. Direct mail, thirty to sixty dollars, and mail drops, four hundred and fifty to six hundred and fifty dollars per one thousand pieces mailed. Okay, so this is a leads generation scam. On how you generate business so you is. don't have to bother your friends and family. At Family First Life, we work with fifteen to twenty different lead vendors. These vendors specialize in generating leads that are exclusive to us. We work with several vendors who generate Facebook final expense leads anywhere from $15 to $25 per lead. We also have a new exclusive contract for FFL agents only where they can get a brand new, warm, instant internet life lead for $11 per lead. We have the traditional direct mail leads for mortgage protection and final expense. These leads can cost anywhere from $30 to $60 per lead. Why don't I just make my own goddamn Facebook ad saying, targeting old people, being like, hey, old people, who needs life insurance? Put 100 bucks on it. We also have a vendor who does mail drops of a thousand pieces of mail for anywhere between 450 to 650 per drop. And on top of all that, we have a CRM that has leads anywhere from $1, $2, $3, $10 for brand new agents to start with too. Now let's talk about the fun stuff. Here we go, guys. Here we go. Compensation plans and how you get paid. Our compensation is easy to understand. You do the volume, you move up. We have a producer's contract and a builder's contract. Unlike producer means how much you sold. 
Builder means how many people you recruited. Let's see. Most places where you're obligated. Here we go. Producer contract. Let's look at it right now. You'll earn 130% commission. I'm looking at this one. If you do $60,000 personal production issue paid, I, I can't read that fine print down there, but I'm guessing that's important. And then <clears throat> you'll earn, you'll also earn 130% if you have a $250,000 total hierarchy issue paid. So even just with doing some surface level math here, ask yourself this, is it going to be easier for you to do $60,000 worth of business on your own personal production issued? right? Is it going to be easier to do $60,000 worth of um, business on your own? Or is it going to be easier to build a team that generates $250,000 worth of business, especially consider that the people you recruit, you're mo those are most likely going to be customers who then go and duplicate and sell to their customers to try to achieve this bonus or this, sorry, this, uh, contract level, this commission level, 130K, 130%, my apologies, 130%. I think the answer is obvious. Obligated to recruit and build an agency in order to move up, we're not like most. You can move up from a 90 to a 130 strictly off of your personal production. For example, let's say you sell 40,000 in life business with no team two months in a row, then you'll earn a 120% compensation. We have a or compensation plan while most companies have a and compensation plan. What I mean is this, you can sell $40,000 by yourself two months in a row, or you can build an agency that does 150,000 back-to-back months to obtain that 120% compensation. Other companies are and companies. They basically say you have to sell 40,000 a month and your team has to do 150,000. I thought you guys were the, with the Amazon and Uber of insurance. I thought you guys were revolutionizing the industry. Where in Amazon and Uber are they recruiting people? Where are, I, I've never seen Uber drivers recruiting more Uber drivers so that they can unlock a higher commission for their uh, ride fee on Uber. This seems like they are making the most work out of nothing. I'm, I'm trying to look it up on another site to see if I can read that fine print. Okay, here it is. To qualify for a new contract level, an agent must hit the required production for two consecutive months. Okay, so it's not just 60,000 one time. It's actually 120,000. Sneaky. So you'd have to hit 60,000 at least for two months in a row, which is 120,000. So you'd either have you'd either have to do 250k with a team or half of that by yourself. Which is the, which one are you going to do? FFL production months end on the last Thursday of each month for something, something only your personal production members numbers will count toward your promotions. Okay. Producer contracts. I think that says for builder contracts. Oh, see. Okay. And also, how did I miss this? Also, also, also notice this or he's talking about this or system. You could do it on your own with a producer contract, or you could do the builder contract up to 130%. But if you want 135%, 140, 145, these are only builder contracts, meaning the big, big money is only for people who recruit. So you're telling me if I'm able to exceed 60,000 in personal business every month, let's just say, let's say I was doing 100,000 a month in business by myself, you guys are going to cap me at 130% even though I'm I could I'm doing more money than most people are doing with their team. So again, this is you know, there's no good MLM company in my opinion. They're just some of them are just better at uh obfuscating the truth and and using subterfuge better than others, but even this type of plan here is is gently nudging you towards the recruiting building side of thing. For builder contracts, your personal production and your total hierarchy's production will count toward your promotion. Of course. The 50% max rule does apply to all builder contracts if one of your direct legs counts for 50% of your entire hierarchy's production, you will only receive 50% credit for that leg. Again, nonsense. Why would the legs matter if I'm doing this much 
bringing this much money in for the company. Nonsense. Yeah, such a scam, in my opinion. All right, let's keep watching. Thousand, and you have to have 33 unique writers. And we think that's crazy because they're just making it harder for you to move up. What happens if you're really good and you and the agents that you work with are really good too? You sell 40,000 and you teach them how to do the same, but you don't have the unique writers to move up. That sucks. So the left column is simple. Producer's contract. Anywhere from a 5,000 to a 60,000 in personal production on your own pen, two months in a row, you'd move up to that compensation plan. But let's talk about the builder's contract. Let's say you want to build an agency so you don't have to sell life insurance for the rest of your life. You can do that as well. So let's say I write $20,000 a month and I teach nine other people how to sell $20,000 a month just like myself. If I were to do that for two months straight, that's a $200,000 in agency volume, which means I have earned the 125% comp. How much did I do? I did 20. How much did the team do? They did 180. Combined, we did 200. Now, whether it's nine people or one other person or whatever it is, it doesn't matter. Our comp plan is simple. You do the volume, you move up. You build, you move up. Let's talk about the part-time agent with Family First Life. At Jesus FF Christ. All right, let's see. Fell, if you want to be part-time, we have a plan for you too. Let's say you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, so you decide to jump on board and work part-time on your future. Most part-time agents start on what we call brand new instant warm buyer leads. You run appointments on just Saturday and Sunday because most people that have jobs work from Monday through Friday, so Saturday and Sunday, everybody's home. You book 10 appointments, five appointments a day, and you only close three out of the 10 appointments. So that's terrible, but let's talk about how good terrible is at Family First Life. So let's say you sell a policy. Yeah, but this is, you gotta buy leads. Again, they're going back to the leads of $60 a month, which is $720 is what the client pays annually. The insurance company is going to pay what the client's annual premium is, 720, multiply by your contract level. Let's just say it's 90. For a We're also not factoring in chargebacks. So let's, you know, this is an extremely unrealistic, extremely generous example. A total of $648 for that commission. 648 per policy times three policies a week is $1,944. Making it up. Now let's take that $1,944 and subtract the $400 you spent on leads. That's $1,500 a week. $1,500 a week times four weeks a month is just over $6,000 for that month. Dude. FFL had a bunch of folks that were up to their eyes in debt due to purchasing poor quality leads. Often, they were using sales to represent salary instead of profit. That's exactly what Lead I thought. Lead costs are too high. Thank you for ex thank you for that donation and for that uh, comment that went along with it. <clears throat> sugar, uh, who was that? That wasn't Sugar Mama. Oh, that was a super chat. My bad. Uh, a Walker. Yes, thank you. Using sales to represent salary instead of profit. Lead costs are too damn high. I agree. I agree. This is insane, bro. You know what's insane? The fact that seventy of you seventy of you guys have not thumbs up the stream. Thumbs up the team. Click like on the stream. All right, here we go. Let's keep watching. This is so, so unrealistic, bro. 6,000 a month times 12 months. I like how they also, you know what? Fuck it. Months. That's $74,000 in a year. That's not a bad part-time gig. Matter of fact, that part-time gig is probably better than most people's full-time gigs. But let's talk about you becoming a full-time agent at Family First Life. Most full-time agents run 30 appointments a week. They'll sit on about 20 people and they'll close 10 out of the 20. How could there ever be enough customers to go around how often does one person buy insurance you buy it once and you set it and forget it and you let it renew until you need to file a claim and that's that why on earth how on earth could there be enough leads to go around for all the representatives to each eat if this is such a great opportunity people would be flocking to it if people are flocking to it and buying the leads that means that the leads are in it means that the leads are in higher demand, which means they're more expensive. They're either going to go up in price or there's just less to go around. Is there infinite leads? Of course not. Half. That's not bad. That's average. So let's just say you sell a policy for $80 a month. The insurance company is going to pay you $960, which is the client's annual premium, times your contract level, which is in this example, 110%. So every policy you sell at $80 a month, the insurance company is going to pay $1,056. 1056 per policy times 10 policies a week, that's over 10 grand in a week. 10 grand in a week subtracted by the 1500 that you're gonna spend in leads, it's about $9,060 left remaining, that's your net. Nonsense. Multiply that by four weeks in a month, $36,000 in a month, take that, multiply by 12, 430. So bro, the amount of leads money that's going into this fucking thing is absolutely unfathomable. Cause what if somebody, what if a customer charges back? What if, you know, even uh, a fifth of your customers charge back?
You lose that commission, but are you getting your leads money back? Of course not. 34,000 and some change for the year. That's how we have so many agents hit that prestigious Hall of Fame 400,000 on their own pen award. Hashtag best business ever, LOL. Let's talk about agency building. In real estate, when an agent becomes yeah, licensed, less. they park their license with a particular- here, come, here comes the fucking real estate analogy again. This is nothing like real estate. Realtors are not out here recruiting more realtors in order to hit some volume quota so that when they sell a house, they get a higher commission than if they, it, than if they had just sold it on their own. Stop fucking comparing multi-level marketing to real estate. Particular broker. Every time that real estate agent sells a house, they get paid a big commission, but the real estate broker gets paid a small broker fee as well. I don't know why they call them real estate brokers. They should call them real estate richers. If you were a real estate broker, how many agents would you want? One, five, 10, 100? As many as you can get, right? In the insurance business, we have the same opportunity. Let's say you're at a 110% contract and you hire. If you're the broker, yeah. He, he's, he makes an actual arguable point here. If you're, in a, if you're a real estate broker, meaning you're not out there selling houses, you just run the brokerage that has all the realtors in it. I could see why you would want more realtors because it's more people out there trying to sell houses and you're getting a commission off everybody. You're like, fuck it. But for the realtors, it's bad. In this analogy, you are not the broker. You are not the broker in this analogy. You would be one of the realtors. They're just trying to pitch it to you like you would be the broker. You're, you're building your brokerage. You would get a commission off of everybody that's under you. Yeah, but you're also under somebody else who's under somebody else who's also under somebody else. Right? In the insurance business, we have the same opportunity. Let's say you're at a 110% contract and you hired me. I'm currently at a 100% contract. I go out and write $10,000 worth of business. The carrier is going to pay me $7,500 in advance the following business day. But because you hired me and I work for your brokerage or in insurance terms, agency, you will get an agency override of 10%, the difference between you and me. So if I make 7,500, you made 750. Not a bad gig, right? I hope you send me a present this year during the holidays. But how many agents would you want? One, five, 10? As many as you can get. If you have one part-time agent, that's $750 a month extra. If you had 10 agents, that's $7,500 a month extra. If you had 100 agents, that's $75,000 a month extra agency override to you and your family. We have many other ways that you can get paid as well. Renewals, like we talked about earlier. Bonuses for being top agency managers. Bonuses for personal production. Carrier bonuses. Fucking nonsense. Many leads at FFL are expired, recycled, and do not have correct information. Many people don't even request the information, which is why they will not show you the ads that are run to get leads. Insane. Thank you for that, A Walker. This is for writing a ton of business. We get paid over seven different ways here at Family First Life. Get back to the agent who invited you so they can explain to you more about how we get paid. We talked earlier about training and how it's important that you have the proper training. We have a new agent boot camp that will teach you everything you need to do to make $20,000 a month. We have top producing agents that will show you how to dial the phone and what to say, what their in-home sales presentation looks like, what objections you might need to hear and how to overcome them, what type of leads you should buy so that you can have the best bang for your buck and the quickest return on your investment. We also have a training on how to select the correct products for your clients. We do all of this, not for $4.99 or $2.99 or $1.99 or even $99. We do this for free. All the training at Family First Life is free. We will help you get started fast and get paid right away. As we wrap it up, let's talk about how you can stay connected with us. We have a Facebook group of over 15 to 20,000 agents and more. First life clients, and we have a, what do I need to do? Well, if you're not- A no, positive environment is the last thing on this, on this list that they put. Numbers weekly for full on transparency to see who's doing what. And we have a positive environment that is conducive for success. So at this point you're thinking, what do I need to do? Well, if you're not licensed, we will help pay for your course to get started. You know what's funny? I noticed that there is a, a, a similarity between all things that are truly futuristic and innovative and done in the name of efficiency. Removing humans, removing the human element is, in every example I can think of, the way to make the ship run smoother and faster. In the Amazon warehouse, you see they got those fucking Amazon robots now that can zoom down the hallway of the giant warehouse, grab a box, zoom back. The motherfucker never gets tired. He never complains. He never has to go to the bathroom. When it was uh, lockdown, you would go to a restaurant when they were starting to reopen and the menu would just be the QR code on the table. Or, you know, McDonald's. Think about McDonald's in the past decade. They've started rolling out the kiosks because, you know, there's maybe one cashier there, but it's mostly kiosks. In MLM, it is the opposite. You are 
going the opposite way. You are bringing in more humans, more human interference, more human error, more human slowness, sluggishness, and fucking nonsense. This is why I think my dream business to own is a storage facility. Straight up. My dream business to own is a storage facility. You buy the land, you put up the facility. It only has to be of a quality that can hold people's stuff. People aren't living inside it. So you don't have all these regulations of like, you know, plumbing and heating and electrical, like, it, it, like as though it was somebody's residential home. It's storage. People pay you every month. You have one, you know, employee that sits there at the desk answering the phone and, you know, giving people the paper to sign. You have a security guard who's there 24 seven. And what else? You don't need staff, really. Maybe you have another person there who helps people like move shit in, move shit out, but people do that on their own. They have their own access, like key for their lock, fob, whatever it is. If somebody doesn't pay, guess what? You can flip the unit in one day. If somebody doesn't pay, you charge them a late fee. They pay it. If they still don't pay, guess what? The stuff goes up for auction. You ever seen that show, uh, what's the storage wars? That's exactly what it is. Somebody left their unit. They didn't pay for it. All this shit gets auctioned off. So guess what? If somebody doesn't pay, I still get my money. And then once the auction is done, I flip that unit, sweep it out. And the same day it's ready to be flipped and, and rented out to somebody else again. Virtually no risk. Dude, the failure rate. I'm so passionate about this storage storage business failure rate just give me a fucking percentage storage businesses have a 92% success rate i don't know what the um how over how many years that is and you know in the future maybe people's shit will become more virtual people won't care about having physical stuff but i still believe people are materialistic and addicted to their stuff i think people out there in the world still have more shit than they know what to do with. So, uh, you know, that's my dream business. And you know what, you know what is so, you know why it has a high success rate? In my opinion, no humans. There's no human interference. There's, you know, the opposite in my opinion would be a restaurant. I saw my dad, you know, have restaurants throughout my life when I was a kid. And I just see the stress that goes along with it. You know, there's people, there's customers that are trying to fuck you over with uh, just being Karens and leaving Yelp reviews and trying to get shit for free. The waitresses are trying to fucking steal from the cash register and, you know, get drunk and do all this shady shit. You got the chef in the kitchen who's stealing cucumbers for no reason. It's just a whole bunch of shit, a whole bunch of human bullshit. Why would you ever create a business model where you are injecting more humans at such a constant rate. It's insane. TD says FFL is being sued by the FTC right now for providing false information. I sure hope so. You know. Um, <clears throat> and also, dude, if. But yeah, Lord Vader, he says best business is owning a parking lot. Parking lot is a, a great business, too. As a matter of fact, I if you uh, wanted to do the storage facility business like I talked about, Owning the land is step one. Maybe you can't afford to construct the storage facility just yet. Okay, so make it a parking business. Make it a parking lot. Run it as a parking lot for a couple of years until you have the capital to actually change that land from being a parking lot into the storage facility. Have eight units, 12 units. There you go. Now you have a storage facility. Keep building it up. You know? You may, maybe you have a little office where you sell boxes and tape and packing peanuts and locks. Maybe you have a couple moving trucks that you rent out to people. You know, there's many ways to skin a cat, as they say. But the storage business is like exceptionally low risk and just a beautiful, beautiful business, in my opinion. So um, and you own land. You also own land. So that's, you know, you see it. I don't crush it at Burger King. I have a strong why. Hilarious. I'm reading your guys' comments. Uh, 
I'm reading your guys' comments right now. $1,500 on leads a week is $70,000 a year spent on leads. Isn't that fucking insane? How could there be enough leads left after Primerica, WFG, PHP, FFL, all these different insurance people are trying to like get a piece? Insane. Amazon Fresh stores also know humans. There you go. 18,000 agents on Facebook with the median salary being 170,000. That's what, a $3 billion company? Yeah, exactly. Just the math make no fucking sense. $100 super chat to read out loud, plus find five other people to donate. Hilarious. All right. What up, Anthony? Appreciate you being here. What up, Digital Acetone? Paved Paradise yet? Re Reagan says, I do restaurant taxes and it's a nightmare. Fucking nightmare, bro. I know it's like a, a charming, romantical thing to have like a little cafe or a restaurant. Please, for the love of fuck, unless you have, unless you could, unless you have so much money that you wouldn't even care if you lost the money it would cost you, to run a, a food-related business, don't go into the fucking restaurant business, bro. Okay? It's usually a $200 fee, but like we talked about earlier, you don't pay fees here at Family First Life. So we are going to cover that pre-licensing course for you as long as you schedule your exam and become an agent with us. If you're already licensed, we will send you our carrier appointments so you can get ready to sell some insurance and protect some families. At this point, you're either an A... I love how they say that, protect some families. They always, they're always the good guy, you know? E or a C. A C person says, see you later. This is not for me right now, but I'll definitely be seeing you later because I know the company's going to grow so fast that I'll jump on later on. The B person says, I'm in, but I have some questions that I need to get answered to see if it's a good fit. Watches TV all day and has no business or insurance experience. The A person says, I'm all in. When you say Benjamin, thank you for joining the Patreon. Appreciate you, bro. Thank you. I can make $70,000 a year part-time and all the way up to $400,000 a year full-time. I'm in. Get oh, back to the person fuck. that- Exhausting. Exhausting. Uh, we definitely are not going to make it through this full Sean Mike and Ray Higdon podcast. This was just uploaded today, but I do want to see a little bit of it, of it just to see. All right, guys, thank you for jumping on and joining us today for punch me in the face. I'm really excited because, you know, a lot of times when you bring people on and I, and I, I'll be honest with you, you start looking at what they've done and I'm excited for everybody, by the way, I don't care where you are, where you start. go into, you know, compute computers. So I went into computers, right? Connected with their dad, their dad died shortly after. So can't do that. And so I go attention, right? It draws them in, you know, you're, yeah. it's a non fictional story, but it draws. So when Ray's obviously really good at this, but like explaining to you where he was when he started two failed businessmen two. <laughs> Two wrestlers, two professional wrestlers, two professional cosplayers cosplaying as legitimate businessmen. In Ray's case, he also cosplays as a, uh, what the fuck you call it? Man of God. What up, Joseph? No need to file a missing goon report. Appreciate that. All right, let me open up this Zoom call. I'm sure the dude has joined me right now. Yeah, he's in here. Felipe, let me go ahead and admit Felipe into the Zoom call. All right. Felipe, can you hear me? Make sure, hold up. Felipe, can you hear me? Hold on, I can't hear you. Make my sure bad, my mic. There you go, there you can go. You hear me? Yeah, I can Solid. hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, perfect. Okay, what's clear, up, man. Bro? How's it going? Ah, uh, busy, but how are you doing? I'm doing good. Good, I good. I'm, uh, I'm blessed. I'm you know? live on YouTube right now. What's up, YouTube? What's up? Is it cool <laughs> if I share you on the screen? I don't care, bro. Do whatever you want. All right, cool. Oh, Appreciate it. Yeah. Um. Cool. So, let me go over here.
All right, Felipe, go ahead. Who? Uh, what do you do? Uh, Marco, well, first of all, man, appreciate you having me uh, on. I know you're probably busy and stuff like that. I saw your video with Alejandro, and I was like, you know what? Let me reach out to Marco, maybe show him what the insurance, like, you know, pretty much give my perspective on the way I see insurance and stuff like that. My business with Family First Life. I mean, I'm 26, been doing insurance for, I want to say, six, seven years, took a little break, had some health stuff. I'm back here, been with Family First Life almost three years now. Mm hmm and um you know i can't look back ever since man it's been it's been a blessing obviously a lot of hard work a lot of dedication and you know we're just moving forward okay cool so th was there some things in the video with alejandro that you uh like disagreed with that he said or what was it that made you want to reach out uh i mean because full transparency full transparency uh, I used to be in PHP, so that's how I started. Okay. Right. They got me right out of high school. I was always driven. Motiv I, I mean, I got decent grades in school, 3.8, whatever, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to be a, an engineer. And then I knew I always wanted to be do something, right? So I was working at Starbucks. They reached out to me, a friend of mine. You know how they get you, a friend of mine. And, and I was like, okay, cool, man, let's do it. I went to their BON meeting, business opportunity meeting, how they call it. I saw the, I saw what it can do. Right. Again, this is me. I, I don't know anything about the insurance industry. This is, I'm brand new, like 18, you know what I mean? So I went, I saw the business, the meeting. I was like, cool, I can do this. I mean, it's either this Starbucks and go to school. Like I can do this, you know, why not? Mm -hmm. Why not do it? So, and I got started with that company and I was there for a little over a year. Um, you know, I was the guy that recruited 25 people, did 25, you know, whatever you want to call it. I was that person, 60%. And at that time I thought it was, the best thing ever. Again, I don't know anything else about the insurance industry, but whatever, whatever they told me to do, I was like, okay, cool. I'll do it. I'll, I'll, I'll be coachable the way they call it. And I'll just go all in. You uh -huh. know what I mean? So I did it. And, you know, um, and in a way it's also a blessing. They taught me a lot of stuff, you know, about entrepreneurship, made me see the world in a, very, in a, in a, in a different way. And how, you know, just, you know, the regular, you know, I don't have to just go to college to be successful or do whatever I want to do, you know, be your own boss, whatever, all that crazy entrepreneurship stuff you know right okay so mm -hmm. so i'm guessing you think your opinion is that ffl is different and much better than php a thousand percent okay it's why? not even a comparison uh first things first you don't have to pay a ridiculous fee to join the company right let's get that out of the way you're 18 years old and you don't have money you don't have to pay the fee can i say something about Second. that R right off the yeah. bat so mm -hmm. I don't know if you were watching my stream prior to me patching you in on this Zoom, but okay. we, just, we watched a, an opportunity, like the presentation video, about 18 minutes long. And in it, it the talks about how- The business overview? Pardon me? The business overview video? Yes, sir. Okay. And, and okay. it talks about how the, you know, it goes over the compensation plan and all that stuff. And it says mm -hmm. how they- they're competitive because they don't charge a, a, a sign-up fee like other MLM companies, multi-level marketing companies. But then they mm -hmm. spent a good amount of time talking about expensive leads. So whether you're paying mm -hmm. for sign-up fee or you're paying leads, you're still paying. Don't do, do you don't you see? Sorry, do you see my stance that they're sort of just replacing one fee with another? Not really, because you don't have to buy leads. It's just an sure? option. Okay. It's like, hey, if if you like me, when I joined, when I was with people helping Patrick, the way I like to call it, yep. PHP, <laughs> right? They exhausted my warm market. Like everybody, whoever, people hated, like it's a great nobody point. was talking to me. That's a great they point. They exhausted my warm market. I joined and they would sit with everybody. And I was walking around. Every, any, every person that I saw was like a piece of, like a dollar sign on top of their head, right? Of and I hated that. I didn't know any better though. And eventually I learned from my mistakes, right? Totally. So then, um, so then I was like, okay, how am I going to generate my business? When I joined this company, I was like, I'm a big believer. You have to invest in your business, a big believer of that. Mm -hmm. You just don't start a business and there's, you know, whether it's insurance, whether it's, you know, a car business, whether it's, you know, whatever you want to do, you have to invest in your business, whether it's buying, you know, you know, working capital to buy whatever you need to buy to get it started, long company, whatever you need to buy to get it started, you need to invest. Right. So the way I saw it is I understood that for me, investing in my business was not an issue. I was I was broke. Right. I was on disability, only making 800, 900 bucks a month. But I was like, how can I 
you know, what can I do to get the ball rolling, right? Get the mm -hmm. ball going. So I was like, okay, this lead costs a dollar. I could buy hundred dollars worth of leads. Screw it. Like it's either this or go, go get a job somewhere. Like I've got nothing to lose. You know what I mean? That's the way I saw it. Right. Fortunate enough, I was able to make two, three sales made like, I don't want to disclose how much I made. Right. And point is I made enough money to reinvest back in the business. And it was just from there on, it was just a roller coaster. Now, not all leads are the same. There's leads that are 50 cents up to hundred dollars. Right. Not all leads you have to buy with FFL. You, have, you can buy them wherever you want to do. You can generate your own leads. You can do whatever you want. The way you want to get your customers, clients, totally up to you, right? But I started with FFL, so I was like, okay, and to see what leads you got. I worked them. I'm a hard worker. I, at, least, at least I like to believe I am. I know there's people who outwork me and stuff like that. Right. And, you know, I only took that initial $400, $500 investment, whatever you want to call for me to get the ball going. So, now, it's not the same okay. for everybody, Marco. So, it's not so the can same I ask you real quick something, Felipe? What was the difference, yeah. the main difference you've seen between PHP and this, FFL? Um, <laughs> believe it or not, I, I thought it was, I didn't think it was true whenever they said, oh, we can start to at 100% commission. Like everything you sell, it's 100% commission. That's right? actually pretty standard, yeah. So for me, exactly, again, this was, we're talking about years ago, right? That, mm -hmm. you know, again, I, we didn't know this because we were, we were just so taught to believe you got 30, 40, 50, 60 model recruit, whatever it is. Yeah. Right. So then first, first things first, my eyes is if I'm going to be doing the same amount of work here where I can do that same thing over there and get paid a lot more, I'm all in like, I see it's, it's a no brainer for me. It's a no brainer. If I'm selling a hundred dollars worth of premium, I'm getting, I'm getting hundred percent of everything. And over here, I'm only getting 30%. It's a no brainer to me. Like it's, it's a no brainer. Plus, obviously, you know, I had some personal relationships, whatever leader cultures and stuff like that. I didn't have to go convincing friends to join. I didn't have to go convince um, clients to, to buy this insurance for me. I, I, I just didn't. And for me, it was more of, of that, you know, got you. Okay. So I'm going to get into the nitty gritty, like the sure, sure. personal internal, but well, well, let me just say, first of all, I totally agree with you when you bring up the warm leads thing, like every multi-level marketing company I've ever looked at. And I'm, I'm guessing you're familiar with my channel, at least to some degree, because you yeah. found me on mm -hmm. Instagram. So every MLM company that I've ever looked at, they all have you make this list, which yeah, even if half the people on it were interested, your that list is going to be exhausted pretty much immediately. And then you have no choice but to just go on and recruit people in order to continue to find new customers. You know, your recruits will be your customers. And that comes with selling them a dream, which is, uh, in, in every case I've seen, completely out of touch with reality. Um, even 100%. just during this live stream, we looked at a cease and desist letter that was sent to FFL from the Federal Trade Commission because mm -hmm. their income claims were unrealistic. So mm -hmm. I will say, though, that I agree with you about the leads thing. And I also agree that if you are going to go into selling insurance, whether it's with an MLM company or not, probably you should be getting compensated for your own sales at a level that is competitive with the rest of the insurance industry. Like 100% commission to me seems like what, you know, based on the research I've done and the people I've talked to, that seems pretty standard. So I, I totally get why uh, FFL would be appealing in that regard. However, I still would, I still think it deserves my criticism uh, regarding their income claims and their compensation plan, which at the point of the 135% commission and up is a what they call a, a, a builder contract, which means that it's only you can only unlock those ones by recruiting people. And I'm guessing that when you make a sale to those new recruits, that also counts towards your volume that also counts towards that. So to me, it still seems inevitable that it's going to devolve into one of these uh, dream selling. Uh, you buy from me, I'll get rich. And then you, there won't really be much left for you type type things. And also, sorry to go on, but um, on top of this, like just the insurance industry, insurance sales industry, period, MLM or not broke, you know, agency or not, it's a very hard industry, dude. Like any type of sales is hard. So if you're an 18 or even your age, you're 26, 
even somebody who's in our age group. I just turned 27. So somebody between Happy 18. Late, thank, thank you. Late yeah. <laughs> even somebody between 18 and 27. Who the fuck is going to buy? Who's going to look at me and be like, I'll buy insurance from you. You know what you're talking about. Like old people are going to buy life insurance from me. I, I don't know. I just think that's a, a, a crazy idea that um, there, there are even people out here, even with the companies that do pay 100% or more commission. You factor in the time it takes you. You factor in leads. You factor in advertising. You factor in chargebacks. I just don't even think being an insurance salesperson is a, a business that is going to be around very long. Like even myself, bro, I've had insurance for the past however many years now, six years for my car and my home. And it's all, uh, it's all done online. I've never spoken to somebody from the company I have my insurance through. And for my health insurance, well, I only ever spoke to a person for my health insurance when I called to sign up. And that's it, and never again. So uh, I know I said a lot there, but yeah, please, uh, please respond and say whatever you'd like. I mean, I guess I would have to disagree with some. I won't say most. I think there's a big misconception, right? Um, you cannot. Com first of all, I don't really consider F a family first life on MLM compared to the experiences I have. Well, none of them. Right? And now, and now, no MLM and now, considers well, themselves an MLM, but well, you, one thing you can expect from me is full transparency, right? Um, sure. To, to answer your question, as far as how look, here, here's the thing with leads, right? Leads in a way for me is at least the way I see it, right? I don't have to go and sell to friends and family. I don't. Sure. Right. I'd have to, they'll come eventually your friends or family want to gen I tell my family, if you don't want to buy insurance for me or get insurance, go at least get life insurance. because It's very important, right? Whoever you want to go get it with, right? Leads for me. Are not mandatory i can generate my own leads i can do whatever i want right but leads for me really saved me in my business why because i saw a vehicle i was like okay i can buy these leads and i can go people are requesting for the information again not all these are the same so you're gonna get so you can buy some leads where a lot of people don't answer some leads where information is missing you can buy some leads for higher intent which are a little bit more who you call them and boom, boom, like you, you go and sit with them. They already know what you're coming for. They know that you're getting there. They want insurance and that's it. Now the other, the other statement that, so again, leads, you have to, you, you don't need to, I buy them because it's, it's been working for me, right? It's been working for me. And because of leads, I am where I'm at, sure. but I don't have to, if I don't want to, I don't have to, sure. right? I'm independent. We're an IMO. Nobody's my boss. Nobody tells me what to do. Well, you right? could be, you could be terminated though. 100%. I just go and get contracted with the same company again. They release. Right. That's it. I, I that don't know not if I'd go as, I hear what you're saying about being independent. Not a big I, wouldn't, deal. I wouldn't go as far as to say you're the boss, though. Well, I, technically I am because nobody's telling me what to do. I work on my own schedule. You know, I, as long as I'm not committing any fraud or, you know, stuff like that. That's right. even with the, even if you're independent with the, with the, with the company, even to just say I'm direct to whatever company. Sure. Technically, if you want to say it, they're the boss because they can terminate you whenever they want. Does sure. Yeah. Sense? I'm not going to, you, gonna... you know what we mean? Yeah. You know I'm not going to nitpick that point for sure. So, um, back to my thought here, right? Um, I, I even lost my train of thought. What was I going on with Sorry. this before you, before you said, you were that? talking about the leads, how you find value in the leads. Yeah. I found value in the leads. Right. But I mean, not everybody does. Some people have bad experiences and whatever the case is, you know, of course, you know, unfortunately it happens and not everything's the same. Right. And, so it is what it is, right? Um, but I, I just feel, I just, for me, I feel that if, if there's other companies out there, like for example, we're talking about PHP, right? Yeah. The company that we were part of before, right? I'm, um, I don't want to say it in a way where it doesn't come off. I need, I need to be careful with my words here. Sure. Um, when we were in that company, right? And whenever we heard about FFL and I followed the person who brought me on board in the company, right? I was like, what do you mean this already new hundred percent? What do you mean? What do you mean? There's no, you don't have to sign a contract. What do you mean that you're vested day one? What do you mean? You can, bring, if you decide to leave, you can get your own, bring your book of business. Yeah. That was impossible for me because I only knew one thing. I, I, for me, that wasn't believable for me. That was like, no, that sounds like a scam. I'll believe it when you're actually there. And when I actually see the money there, does that make sense? 
Sure. So I just followed her. I just followed her, went, and I was like, oh, shit, okay, this is crazy. It's actually true. And then, so for me, it's more of like, just because something is too good to be true, most of the time, most of the time, it is. But sometimes you'll find those hidden gems where like, okay, this is legit, right? I see I see here, I can, privately, I can send you everything that I my lead costs. But dude, if I spend 72K in leads, right? I'm making 400,000. Does that make sense? Are you? Full transparency. Um, I can show you my 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 1099s. Not publicly gonna, here, but well, I'll, can you can you I'll tell me privately? Do you, do you make more than one hundred thousand to your pocket? A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Okay. So so gen, so take this into factor. Whenever we talk, whenever we sit and talk to somebody, at least my agency does this, right? I cannot speak for all of Family First Life the way they run it. It's up to them, right? The way I speak for this, I always factor in at least seventy percent. Is going to be retention, meaning that's what stays on the books. So if you sell, if you if ten clients get insurance from you, expect three percent of that to cancel to charge back payment to charge back, right? Okay. So, so at least you're keeping seventy percent of that profit. So, so let me. I mean, I'm not gonna get. I'm not gonna ask you to divulge the exact amount you're making, but because you mm -hmm. said it's more than six figures, I'm gonna just say for the sake of this hypothetical, it's a hundred k. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you get a hundred k paid to you. You personally have your own sort of built-in, uh, you know, policy of hypothetically 30% is going to get charged back, right? Mm -hmm. So Again, it could be more at the end of the day. It, it could be more, but let's be conservative, yeah. right? Just to be generous mm -hmm. to you. So 100,000, let me minus 30,000 then, okay? 70, and the 000. reason why I say that, Marco, um, yes, sorry sir. to interrupt you here. Our, our, our insurance carriers, right, they have a criteria. Mm -hmm. If you go before, if you go under a certain threshold in persistency, they give you a chance to bring it back up. If they don't, you're terminated because sure. that's poor quality of business. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? Yeah. No right. one wants somebody in their team. For, so that's what I'm saying. 70% will, will stay in the books because that's what you need to do. You know what I mean? No, totally. So, okay. A hundred yeah. thousand paid out to mm -hmm. you in commission. Boom. Mm -hmm. Minus 30,000. I think that's fair. I mean, based on what I've heard mm -hmm. about the frequency of chargebacks. People are always shopping. Mm -hmm. There's always somebody trying to poach your client, right? There's always somebody trying to 100%. tell you. So, so you mm -hmm. know, if we take away 30%, I think that's fair. So we have 70,000 mm -hmm. left. We haven't factored in leads yet. So okay. if you're making 100,000, I would just ask you to sort of adjust based on whatever you make. I don't know how much you make. You could make 500,000. I don't know. What okay. percentage mm -hmm. of this 100,000 in this hypothetical would it be fair to say you are spending on leads? I know you said it's optional, so technically it could be um, zero, but let's be just give me a realistic figure. I'm going based off what I did, and I'm just going to do the math that way and just divide sure. that by four. So I want to say 20K, 15K, 15K? Let's say 15. I'll be generous. 15K, okay, whatever. Because that's the lesser amount. So 15K. Mm -hmm. So 70,000 mm -hmm. minus 15K. If I'm not mistaken, we're at 55K. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? So, 100%. And is this, is this your independent, personal, like of your own pen, as they say? Or is this your overall with your agency? Yeah. I'm including my own pen. Not agency, not override. So this is just your pen? Visit. My pen. Just you. So 55K. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we started at 100 we, mm -hmm. we cut off 30 just to be uh, conservative about chargebacks mm -hmm. and we cut off another 15 K um, mm -hmm. to factor in lead purchases. Mm -hmm. If we went any higher with the, does this say net is 40,000 give or take 40. Okay. Yeah. Let's just say the net's 40. Okay. In, let's, in, let's be let's let, let's bring it down let's let's include you know whatever you spend on food whatever you spend sure, on gas if you say so whatever the, so just say net's forty thousand okay sure forty thousand mm -hmm. I mean the calculation we did before would have you at fifty five k but you yeah, want to say forty k that's fine I mean yeah, let's do forty sure forty but I mean forty k is like it's a far cry from the opportunity presentation video that I watched which was talking about literally ten x that amount for the top mm -hmm. people in the company. Again, though, how can I put this in, into perspective? That's not me full time. That's probably me working one week out of the whole month. Does that make sense? So what to are you be, doing the rest of the time? To be upfront with you. 
Right. So that's what I'm saying. So we're going into these hypotheticals, right? Where you're doing. Well, let me ask you personally. I, I, won't, I won't do hypothetical. So what what mm-hmm. are you doing with your other three weeks? So if if I'm doing that part time, if I'm if I'm actually if I'm only making a hundred thousand and only spending that amount, then do whatever you want to do. I don't know. So so is this an accurate? Your life. Is this hypothetical? We did an accurate representation of like the amount of work you do. Like you work once one week a month. Nope. No, okay. I, I thought we were speaking into hypotheticals here, so that's why. I said, well, I'm trying to base but, it off but your... me specifically. Me specifically, right? My schedule: I'm booked Monday through Saturday, Monday through Friday, whatever. Sometimes I take the weekend off. Sometimes I don't. Sure. Whatever the case is, because I want to go travel, do whatever I want, right? So I'm what, trying to. Well, my schedule. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, I'm trying to tailor it as close to your personal, because you said no. transparency, and I wanna, I wanna utilize your okay, transparency so- but if you're not comfortable saying how much you make that's sort of why i just started with that hundred thousand hypothetical because i'm trying to tailor mm-hmm. it oh, towards okay. your experience without you having to divulge your income. whatever you want man whatever you want i oh. could do I, we could do a hypothetical we could do personal what it actually is whatever you want to do okay so help me understand because i i really wh- what i want to get an understanding of is how does the time uh investment break down like how much time is it taking you to make X amount of dollars if we were to try to break it down to like an hourly or even just monthly salary, right? Um, and then okay. also, how does that number that we arrive at, how does that compare to what was advertised in the opportunity video that I watched? And then lastly, is it based on recruitment? Uh, I guess, what, what do they call it? Uh, builder compensation or your own personal work? So I would mm-hmm. love it if we could... If we could break down your own personal um, yeah, let's do it situation, if you want, because mm-hmm. in my opinion, if if there's no um, if there's nothing shady going on, it should it should be no problem. But it's again, it's it's your choice. Can you hear that fan or no? No, you're good. No, okay, perfect. Uh, yeah, we. It's up to you. Let's just, okay. Let's break down me, please. All right, I'll be transparent with please, everybody, please. everything. Right, I appreciate that. Five five to six days a week. Right. So you, you saw that, I don't know if you remember on the agency overview video where they talked about that Hall of Fame, Yeah. right? I hit Hall of Fame. I did that, right? Okay. I did Hall of Fame. That okay. was me. And when we talk about issue paid, this, so there's another difference, right? So there's back in PHP, people helping Patrick, we counted submitted business, right? So if you go and help a client, they're paying $100 a month, that, that totals to $1,200 in premium a year, right? We counted that. We never counted, right. you know, what you were actually making. Right. Okay? And that person might have so, only been making 30% of that premium, but they're reporting that they made 1200 Go ahead. Exactly. Right. So now back to the FTC filing that you're talking about. There's always going to be those people in your companies who ruin it for the rest. Well, okay? can I say one thing There's about gonna, that? Yeah, go ahead. This is, mm-hmm. this is what I call the bad apples argument. And I, exactly. I sort of hear this. This is sort of, to me, in my experience... This is a tricky things that a tricky thing that MLMs do is when mm-hmm. they when they how do I say this? So everyone in an MLM is not uh, an employee, like a legal employee. Mm-hmm. They are an independent contractor, third party contractor. Mm-hmm. So this way, when inevitably it comes out that those recruits, no matter how high up the chain they are, when they start saying these crazy things, make a million dollars a month, whatever, Mm -hmm. the company on a corporate level can say, oh, no, no, they don't actually speak for us. They were just a bad apple. They didn't actually represent. Mm -hmm. Now, the video that I watched was like a well put together, official looking video. Mm -hmm. And to, to, you know, sort of to push back on that idea about the bad apples again, if if it gets to a point where the FTC is issuing a letter to FFL saying, hey, here's three examples of people saying stuff, that means if they had three examples, that means there was also more that they didn't cite. 100%. And yep. if there was more, they learned it from somewhere. Mm-hmm. The problem is that no matter how high up the chain you go, usually you're going to find out that that person learned it from someone who's also a third party contractor technically, and they mm-hmm. learned it from someone who's a third party contractor. It's basically the reason why these MLMs are able to forever claim that they're innocent because, oh no, no, you know, look at our official uh, guidelines handbook. It says that you can't say stuff like that and you always have to be very transparent. Mm-hmm. But when it actually comes down to what's going on in those Zoom meetings and in those in-person opportunity presentations, it's completely, completely the opposite. So, um, 
I, yeah. I can only speak. I can only speak from my my agency, our agency, that wherever we're in, wherever it is, right? Sure. I don't. I don't. I can't speak for the others, right? But with with us, we're full transparent. We we don't hide anything. Day one, we're talking about chargebacks. We're talking about everything because we are we're independent, right? Unlike PHP, where they're at LOA, right? Where where the me the agent sells sells to the client. And then the the insurance carrier pays PHP, and then PHP pays the, the agent. Sure. Although here, no, I'm getting that direct deposit. That 1099 is coming directly from the insurance carrier, right? Okay. So that's the way I can. That's the way only way I see it. And yeah, unfortunately, whenever you're new to the business, whenever you're, because I was there, I was that 18 year old, 19 year old who joined joined the 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 insurance industry, and I was just saying all these things just so I can get people come in and come in. Sure. And, come in. and unfortunately, and just... yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. Apologies. Yeah, unfortunately, there's always going to be those people and there's always going to be those agents with bad intentions and, and you know, they're just in it for the money. They're not actually in it for the actual to help people to, to, to right. life insurance for me is a big deal just for my personal side, right? There's always going to be those agents, right? Sure. And it is a bad, like the Apple, bad Apple argument that you're talking about, but unfortunately it happens, right? Okay. And, Fair enough. Know, we, we just move, move forward. Well, I respect that. And in your case, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt and say that it is true that you're not trying to deceive anyone and you're trying to do good, honest appreciate business. It. So I'll respect that. Mm -hmm. And also, I, I want to make a clarification too. For me to, for me to say I think something is a scam, whether we disagree about terms, pyramid scheme, MLM, whatever, to me, if somebody is saying that you're going to make a million, but then the actual data shows that people on average make couple hundred uh, a year to me that is a scam because expectations are a huge part of it right like mm -hmm. if even if nothing illegal went on if you presented somebody an opportunity based on the strength that they were going to make a million dollars and it turned out that they uh unless uh, a miracle happened that they were going to just make you know ten thousand that year or five thousand realistically it's Realistically, people in MLMs actually go into the negative. They lose money. Mm -hmm. But if 100%. you're telling somebody you're going to earn X amount and the reality is far short of that and then um, the person who brought them in, their response is to say, well, you didn't work hard enough or the system works, you don't work. To me, that is a scam. Mm -hmm. So anyways, I guess, let's get – I guess – Go ahead. Yeah, I guess this is where the full to, – to response to that, I guess this is where the full transparency comes. You can make that money. You have the potential to make that money, but that but it's hard work. It's you know dedication. You know it's the same amount of time and work you're doing to your nine to five. Most of the time, it's gonna it, it takes the same because running a business is hard. You probably run your own business. YouTubing is hard. Content creating, like I'm pretty sure after this, you still have to go and edit the videos or do whatever you got to. People don't know that. People don't understand that, right? Right. So people see the success, but they don't see what actually goes behind it, right? And a lot of people aren't cut out for it, which is respectable by the way if you want to people who work at mcdonald's all that stuff have a regular i 100 percent respect it i was at, i was there one time right but i just me i just if you work hard and if you take your time and you even if you work hard even if it doesn't work out for you just go do whatever you got to do next and that's it just keep moving forward totally right? it's, 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 it's okay. what it is so let's get back to this hypothetical right so i'm gonna say you said you work five to six days a week i'm gonna be conservative mm -hmm. and just say mm -hmm. five Mm -hmm. okay? okay, so five days a week. Keep walk me mm -hmm. through it. Mm -hmm. Walk me through the oh, rest so, of the okay. information. So five days a week. So pretty much Mondays are my, my quote unquote office days. I go in, make a point, uh, um, make appointments right for Tuesday and Wednesday, right? Typically that consists of ten to fifteen appointments, right? That I'm actually going scheduled to go sit with clients, right? Out of the ten fifteen appointments, I I I probably sit with. 10 clients or eight clients, right? Meaning that those are the, those are the ones who actually open the door for me, not the ones who closed, like weren't there or just schedule me just to schedule, right? Out of the eight people that I sit with, I'm closing 70%, 70 to 80%. So I'll, 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 I'll probably end up doing five to six sales, right? Now I've, I've also had terrible weeks where I don't do anything and you know I, sure. I feel like quitting all the time, but sure. that's just what I do, right? That's just mine. And then, again, and then Thursdays, again, my office days, and then, you know, Friday, Saturdays, go sit with clients, whoever had those appointments, whether it's referral appointments, whether it's, you know, word of mouth appointments, whether it's lead sure, appointments, sure. whatever the case is, right? And then sometimes I do work Sundays, you know, just depends on my goal that month, whatever I want to do, if I'm behind, then I'll work those extra days, right? And 
that's pretty much it. And you know, okay, so that probably my first appointment will probably be sorry to interrupt you. Go ahead. My first appointment will probably be eight in the morning, right? My last one will probably won't be until seven p.m. right Oof. At, at night. Yeah, you know damn. I mean? Yeah, I, I I hustle, man. I hustle again. It's my schedule is up to me, right? Right. I but can that's only a, that's a that's an eight to eight right there. Yeah, I don't mind it, man. Okay, okay. I just so don't. Eight to eight. I don't. I'm. A, I don't. I'm cut out for it. I, I, I'm not. I, no, I don't make I any excuses. That. I don't I respect mind that. It. I respect that. I respect that. So okay. So let's. Let me just keep up with the math here. So we talking about twelve hours, five days a week, sometimes more. I'm gonna just say five. Mm -hmm. So twelve times five. So you work in sixty hours a week. That's a lot, bro. That's more than a full time. Well, you also have to. You also have to take into consideration. You know. Client, some clients won't show up. Some clients won't open the door for you. So then you have right. that spare time. Right. Okay. So then it's up to you what you want to do. Go get lunch or sit in your car or go to the next appointment early or dial more, you know, see if you can go visit for a sure. client or whatever you want to do. You, you're, it's totally up to you. But, but let's just say I work those 60 hours. Yeah. Right? I'm, well, because I'm guessing too, like, let's say you have somebody booked at three for an hour and you have somebody booked at four for an hour and you have somebody booked at five for an hour and the person who was from uh, four mm -hmm. to five they flopped. I'm guessing in that one hour space, you're you're still doing things that are like conducive to your business, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm still I'm still just so for the, the way sake I of do it, my account, yeah. that, you know. Mm -hmm. So the way I do my appointments is I leave a 30 minute gap in behind. So for example, if I have an appointment with you, Marco, at four, sure, my next appointment won't be until 5:30. Sure. Okay. Right? Got you. Got you. That way, because I it's, it has happened to me before where I'm just back to back and then right. I'm, yeah, it's I'm arriving late Trust to my me. other appointments. I get like, it. No. It's crazy. Okay. So boom, yeah. we got a we got a rough estimate of sixty hours a week, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And you're doing pretty good sales, five to six sales a day. Of course, it fluctuates, but we're averaging it mm -hmm. out, right? So boom, I'm not sure what the type specific type of insurance is. I know every different plan pays out different. different. Also, where mm -hmm. you are on FFL's uh, chain right, depends on your percentage. Yeah. So let's just talk about you, because I, I, otherwise we could speculate all day. So I just want yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I just want to disclose my commission. Um, my commission, like percentage that I'm at, simply because with FFL, we encourage not, you know, whatever happened with the FTC, whatever the case is, we we just at least publicly. If it's privately, then yeah. Respect. But just know it, it's more than 100. percent Just know that it's more than 100. percent Okay, so it's more than 100, but I'm guessing it's less than 135 because 135 percent was that builder bonus where mm -hmm. when you have a large team, and for me, what it sounds like is you work a lot just doing personal sales. So I'm guessing you're between mm -hmm. that 115 to 130% commission. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So even if I was to be generous from here on out with this hypothetical mm -hmm. and say that you were at the top level of producer contract, 130%, let's talk mm -hmm. about what kind of money we're actually doing. And now I know it depends, but could you give mm -hmm. me a monthly yeah. estimate and again, not what people helping Patrick are doing where they're factoring in the policy um, no. premium amount, but the actual commission amount you got. Yeah. So do you want me to factor in? See, I won't factor in overrides and all that stuff. And I'll just factor in personal pen what I'm selling. Okay. You can you can factor in overrides, bro. I don't oh, mind. I just That's just hard to keep track. Like, okay, just, sure. But, I, but I'll, I'll estimate it, right? Sure, sure. So if I'm doing... So give me just your, I, stuff, your, your business first. So let's just say give or take... Um, if I'm spending 1500 on leads a week, right? Give Are or take. you? I, I, think, I think that was my average. Yeah, my average was between 15 to 2500 a week. So that, no, 1000 to 2000 a week. I'm sorry. So let's say 1000 to 2000. Yeah, this is that's what let's just do the middle 1500, right? Got you. Um, let's just say, okay, so then let's do. And just I'm so selling, people okay. that are watching me know, overrides means the percentage of commission you get when one person who's under you makes a sale. So if the person under you is at a 100% contract level, you might get 10%, for example. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, so there you go. So sure. I, I'll go in. If you want me to go into detail when I'm throwing these terms, I can, like I can. No, no, so, I just, that like, was the one term that okay. I want to appreciate take it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Right. So let's just say I did those 30 appointments. I do work full time, right? I, it wasn't always like this. I started part time. I do 30 appointments, right? Um, I want to say I average around. Let's be let's be conserv let's be conservative here. Let's do ten thousand a week, right? Ten thousand a week for sales or those, for commission for sale for for that's paid, 
Paid. Got so it. when we're talking about issue paid, it's business that has actually paid you, not business that's been submitted because that's different. Business that's actually paid you in your pocket and your direct deposit. Commission. Does that make sense? Commission. Yeah. Okay. So ten thousand. So we'll subtract those fifteen hundred and in, in leads, right? And then we'll subtract. Let's just say another five hundred bucks in gas and food, right? So that leaves me with a net of eight thousand, right? And let's just say, quote unquote, thirty percent of that charges back, right? Thirty percent of those that ten thousand charges back, right? So then I'm already from those ten thousand. That's I'm only doing seven thousand, so I'm subtracting three thousand from that. Are you are you like keeping up with like? So is, sure, my, is my math sure making sense? Yeah, let me make sure I'm on pace with you. Okay, I'm gonna pull up my mm -hmm. calculator too. Yeah, we'll do this together. All right, so boom, I got I got I got you in for ten thousand a week. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ten thousand. So a week. Let's just, so from those ten thousand, let's just say thirty percent falls off. So let's say seven k. Thirty percent. Seven k. And then we're gonna and minus five hundred for gas. Very... Five hundred for yeah. And we're this is our weekly mm -hmm. number we're getting. Yeah. Okay. And number. then we're also. Five hundred for gas. And then we're gonna minus fifteen hundred from that for leads. For leads, right? So we're at five. 000. So that leaves me with five thousand. So, so by the way, that I just want to make a point here. 10,000 was what you were paid. And when you factor mm -hmm. in chargeback, uh, leads and other, you know, extraneous mm -hmm. expenses, gas and food, and mm -hmm. uh, it's half, we're cut in half. So 5k, yeah. but still 5k a week, that's 20k a month. So go, go ahead, continue. Plus it's right up. So I ain't tripping. Yeah. Totally. Times four equals. So I'm netting like 20, 25, between 20 and 30,000 is what I'm netting monthly. Right. 20, 30,000. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't include, and damn, I wasn't even including overrides, fuck. But who yeah, cares? Yeah, we're not okay, including overrides. Let's just say $20,000. And then times let's 52 weeks. Let's just say $20,000 is with overrides and whatever. Times 52 weeks is just over a million dollars a year. $1 million and $40,000. $1 million and $40,000 a year would be what you have left. What are you talking about? So we said. I'm so confused here. Where are you getting a million dollars from? <laughs> so the number. The number we're so 40, at is five thousand a week, right? Is gross. So twenty thousand a month. Forty thousand is forty thousand is gross. Right? Twenty thousand a month. For forty thousand. Oh, that's net. We're talking about net there. Twenty thousand is what you net after lead expenses. Yeah, yeah. I've after, already factored yeah. in gen leads and okay, all that. So where are we getting a million from? I'm confused. So, so maybe I did that wrong. Hold up, let me make sure. So we have five thousand a week. Do we agree on that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Times four weeks is twenty thousand a month. Mm -hmm. Sorry, this is what I did wrong. Times, times 12. 12 months. My apologies. 240K mm -hmm. a year. You know yeah, what I, I did like, wrong? Was a million, I, I did the amount that was supposed to be the month, and I did it by 52 weeks. My mistake. Uh, okay. Okay, so 240K like a, million, a year is what we got. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah, give or take. Net, yeah. So we got 240K a year, and this is what I'm going to try to do here. This this is the equation I'm going to That do. doesn't include also the producer bonuses we get from the company and then the overrides and all that stuff. Yeah, got you. Okay, so 240K a year, and we're working... Um, I had that hours calculated of 240 hours a month. So mm -hmm. that's 240,000, 240 times 12, 2880, 240,000 divided by 2880. So this breaks down, and I know we haven't factored in bonuses and whatever, but this would factor into $83 an hour for the amount of hours you're working. So it's pretty good, mm -hmm. but granted, you're mm -hmm. working you know, 60 hours a week. So again, that was just me being over, overdoing it. I'd rather overdo it, overdoing it than for sure. Like for give sure. you the information overly doing it than, you know, for under, sure. you know what I mean? For sure. Okay. Okay. So, and that, mm -hmm. like we said, that's after you factored in a bunch of these costs and we haven't factored mm -hmm. in any sort of overrides or bonuses. Mm -hmm. So talk to me about the overrides and the bonuses. So an override, so I tend to keep my spread. So in the, the way we call it insurance, a spread is if I'm bringing you, if I'm at a, let's say 130%, I'm bringing you in at 125%, right? You get So five. my spread on you is 5%, yeah. right? At least that's what we were taught because in, in, in PHP, the spread was so ridiculous. We, were, we didn't even know. Like when, once we, once I joined the family first life, we understood how these carrier contracts work. So I, that's why for me, I was like, damn. So I was doing 60% because I was a director. So I was doing 60% and <laughs> people above me were, were doing the exact same thing that I was doing all the work. Right? right. So I'm a big believer as far as my agency is I'm keeping a tight spread on you. Again, that's only if I wanted to build because in the beginning, I did not want to recruit anybody or hire anybody reason because 
I have that bad taste in my mouth from the practice company, right? So I was just like, I want to make my money, just sell my insurance, look after people, and that's it. Like, that's all I wanted to do. And then people eventually started reaching out to me and, you know, I was like, all right, fine. Because look, to, you have to take into in consideration when you are recruiting an agent, right? Especially when it's an IMO, when you're independent, because you're responsible for that agent. If that agent leaves behind debt, you have to pay that debt. If not, the other person has to pay that debt, right? So you're responsible for that agent. So I just don't work with anybody. I'm not that person. I don't go at freaking gas stations and, you know, stand there and just, if I see you walking, hey, you look good. You know, I don't go prospecting. I don't. Like, I only work with those who reach out to me that want to work with me. Or if I feel like you're a good fit, I'll present you the opportunity. But that's it, right? One, the reason why I started building, quote unquote, Marco, is because I have health issues, right? And this business, when it's personal pen, this business relies heavily on me like at least majority of my income, right? So if I don't work for a day or two days or for a week, that, that takes a toll, like that, that affects my income, right? So that's why I saw the building side and I was like, okay, let's do it, like screw it. I'll, 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 I'll hire some, I'll recruit some people that wanna join. I know some people who have reached out to me and cause before I was just referring them to whoever were my I got around you. me. So right? explain to me, so Felipe, how, how, does, how does FFL make money when mm -hmm. you go about recruiting someone. So you're keeping the spread, right? So you're bringing mm -hmm. someone in, let's say you're at 130% commission, you're mm -hmm. bringing someone in at 100%. Presumably that means mm -hmm. you have 30% that goes to you. So mm -hmm. what is FFL getting aside from you spending, like you and your recruit spending on leads? So, I mean, whatever, well, I'm, I'm assuming FFL is probably contracted at like 160, 165. Or ah, so they're already getting their piece right off top. Yeah, yeah. Well, not when you recruit them. It's all, uh, when you sell, when yeah, that agent sells. Off that's whoever if they sells. Sell. So they don't care. That's they, if they sell. P, P, uh, yeah. FFL is making the same amount whether you sell the policy or whether somebody below you sells it. Like, Well, not the same amount. They get that, whatever that spread but they're, difference Sorry, is. correction. Yeah. Not the same amount. They're getting a bigger mm -hmm. piece, obviously, if they're uh, doing, if the sale is made by someone with a lower commission. Exactly. Right. But, but still, they're covered. Again, they're getting their money. They're getting their piece. 100% commission. 100% commission. Okay. Again. So, 100% so, so, let me ask you about this, right? This mm -hmm. makes sense to me uh, about, you know, I hear this term thrown around it's business, a lot you know? about uh, passive income, right? You said you had health issues. You don't want to be doing everything yourself. So, mm -hmm. let me ask you this because you seem to be very good at like just understanding business principles. Why would mm -hmm. someone, and this is an issue I have with every MLM, right? They claim okay. to be doing, they claim to be revolutionizing whatever industry it is. They claim to be the next mm -hmm. Amazon or the next Uber of whatever it is. Even in the opportunity video I watched for FFL, they made the comparison between, you know, Amazon, Airbnb, Uber. But the thing that those things have in common is that they reduce human interference and they automate things. Whereas mm -hmm. in multi-level marketing, recruiting other humans is the complete opposite of that. So when it comes to mm -hmm. sales, like supply and demand, right? Why would you, someone in your position, mm -hmm. why would you want to recruit more people who mm -hmm. they're, they're going to go and sell to customers that you could have had, right? Mm -hmm. And you're gonna, instead of getting 130% off of the sale that you could have made, you're gonna recruit someone to make 30% spread on what they sold. Why would you, like, why would that, why would you do that? Well, there's, well, you have to look at it like this, okay? There's not enough agents for the hundreds of millions of people that are in the US, right? Now, the leads that you that you buy or whatever, whoever, whoever vendor you buy it from or whatever the kids, there's always going to be a surplus of leads. Like, it's, a, it's there's always going to be a surplus of leads, whether it's a good lead, whether it's a bad lead, because there's bad leads. Well, can I stop right there lead. for a sec? Mm -hmm. I, I just... Hmm. I, I wish, you know, up until this point, we were able to use numbers and whatever. But when it comes mm -hmm. to this statement of there's there's never going to be enough agents, I just personally don't believe that because okay. there so are... So I'll answer your question prior to that. Sure. How mm -hmm. Do you know the number? I, I'll be fully transparent. I don't know the number. Do you know the I number of how many insurance agents there are in America? Think about it. Between Primerica, WFG, PHP, FFL, and then all the other ones... How how many would you? Uh, should, would Bob you be, Park a million two million. Let me Google it. Um, yeah, Google it. Tell me and, and you can tell me million. if you disagree with the source that comes up. 
How many insurance agents? I'll just take your word for it. Sure. I'm going to Google it. How many insurance agents in America? Okay. It says there are 881,500 licensed agents and agencies and brokers working in the U S 2021 mm -hmm. shows 911,000 life and health insurance agents. Okay. So, so just around a million, not even a million. Dude, so, in LA, that population alone is a million. It's like, you know. Okay, so hold on. It's not second. it's not enough. It's not enough. One sec, one sec. So let's say one million, right? Just to be for the sake of simplicity. Mm -hmm. It's just not enough. Yeah. yeah. They're they're okay, so one million agents. Mm -hmm. And twenty twenty Census Bureau says that in the United States in twenty twenty there were 258 million people in the U.S. who were 18 years or older. Mm -hmm. So let's even just say 260 million because it's probably gone up a bit. So and another yeah go ahead go ahead so so I'm just gonna do another this. thing oh, okay go ahead go ahead another go ahead. thing you also have to factor in Marco is yeah there can be a million licensed agents but not active just just because I have my license it still considers me a licensed agent but if I'm not using it then all right so t tell you what people tell you who what. have their license that's a fair who, point so tell you, you what, what why mean? don't we cut the number in half. Because mm -hmm. that okay. seems, you know, that's fair. Whatever, whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. Let's cut the number in half. So let's say mm -hmm. there's five hundred thousand active, right? It's, I would even be willing to go less than that because it, it don't matter to me. Because yeah. realistically, there's probably so many people who get licensed that end up being like, ah, fuck this, or they sell one yeah. policy and whatever. Mm -hmm. So I'd be, mm -hmm. I'd be, I'd be willing to cut that, you know, cut it into two hundred fifty k. I, I don't care. So five hundred thousand, and there was two hundred. Let's say there's two hundred and sixty million. Uh, adults who are 18 years or older in mm -hmm. the United States. So I'm going to go 260 million divided by 500,000. The reason I'm doing this is because I'm trying to figure out what is the potential customer pool for each individual agent? What is the potential amount of people they could hope to sell to? Mm -hmm. All right. That number is mm -hmm. 520, the number that I got. So okay. 520 people, mind you, I'm not even factoring in people who are choosing not to get life insurance. Mm -hmm. I'm not factoring in the people who already are covered through their employer. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not covering people who just simply can't afford it uh, or have some sort of other form of assistance. So the total pool of people that these hypothetical half a million insurance agents could sell to is 520 people. You said in just your example... You do uh, 30 appointments a day, and that usually translates to five or six actual uh, closed. Well, for, like, for, you, mean, you mean a week? 30 appointments sorry, a week? Sorry, a week. Yeah, five to mm -hmm. six a week. So if you're doing five to six a week, one second. Let me write this down so I don't lose it. Well, a little if bit you're more. Doing, okay, let's say five. If you're doing five mm -hmm. a week times 52 weeks, you, are, you right there are hitting half. 260, that's half the amount of total potential customers mm -hmm. that you would ever have uh, based on the calculation we did before. So how could there ever possibly be enough customers for the people you recruited and the people those people recruited? And never mind never mind other, ag other agents, like you're not even at the top of the uh, compensation plan of your company, right? So there are people above mm -hmm. you who have even more agents. So uh, to me... Even though you have convinced me that you make good money with this, I still come to the same conclusion that people below you and the vast majority of people in the company are probably not making anything. Uh, not true. Go ahead. But we'll go, we'll go into detail. So I'll answer this question and I'll answer the following one that you had and then sure. this one here. So you also have to understand there might be that many amount of people, but not everybody is reachable. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. You asked you asked me the question earlier. Why would I recruit somebody, and then me potentially get a hundred thirty percent or hundred and twenty percent, whatever of that sell, instead of thirty percent? Right. Well, I don't know that agent. I don't know his family. I don't know who he deals with. I don't know his market. I don't know his lead generations. I don't. So if it wasn't for me helping this agent out or recruiting this agent. I would have never known 99.99% of my agents, whoever their clients are, I do not know. 
I do not know. So then where are these right? leads coming from? Because this anywhere this, you this can get then, leads anywhere. This then would beg the question. You know, this is the same thing that mm -hmm. Alejandro said to me too. He said about people mm -hmm. him not knowing the family and friends mm -hmm. of other people. Yeah. That's why the list writing out the list of warm leads doesn't make sense, right? Mm -hmm. Which is a fair point. But that would then so bring we don't you back to the leads. If you mm -hmm. don't know the friends and family of the people you're recruiting, then what is the point of the leads? Shouldn't the leads be doing that for you? Yeah, they, Marco, they did it. They did it for four hundred thousand dollars of my business. So okay, let me get this straight. So between you putting your own efforts in to make appointments, you recruiting people so that you can access, uh, you know, cover the people that they know who you might not know, and I, the leads I don't, I that you're spending money them. on. How Their could you say there's them. still not enough agents? Like by. In my mind, that would mean everyone's covered. And again, like I said, we didn't even factor there. in people who are already covered through their employer, people who don't want to get it, people who already have insurance that they're happy with. So realistically, this 500, this number of 500 potential customers is so small. Think about, I did it for the whole country. Think about what about just for your area, just for your state or municipality that you live in. Like it's virtually impossible. Well, thankfully, Marco, yeah. I have not run out of it yet. Thankfully. So explain right? that to me. I have now run out. So you said, how are leads generated, right? They're generated through Facebook. You can do door knocking. You can you could do internet leads. People go on. It's like, how'd you go get a insurance, a car a car insurance? You went online, car insurance on mm -hmm. State Farm or whoever. They sent you a quote. You are a lead to them. Does that make sense? Same thing with us. If I, if I go with a certain vendor, hey, you, this final expense lead on Facebook, this is an, typically typically an older person between ages 40, 50, and older, right? Who just want to cover their final expenses. So I pay for that lead. I get that lead. I call them up. Hey, so and so, my name is Felipe. I'm a uh, I'm a licensed life insurance. Whatever you want, whatever you want to say. You know, we got your request. We got your information. We got your, whatever you got that you wanted. You were looking and in, interested in getting some life insurance. Is that correct? Yes, I actually remember doing that. Or no, I don't. Or maybe it's been a, a while back and you know, you know, we just got to you. That's how it's done. Okay, perfect. I'm going to be in your area tomorrow. This, this is just you know doing it quickly, right? I'm going to be in your area tomorrow, Tuesday and Wednesday. What time works better for you so I can come down and see how I can help you and how, how what insurance you might qualify for, okay, what so insurance you might get approved for. Can you Does clarify one thing for yeah. me? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. So... You know, you said that if I, you know, when I went online to find my current company that I have insurance through, I'm a lead mm -hmm. to them. But mm -hmm. how do you mean that I'm a lead to them? Because I found them, I bought the insurance. They would never mm -hmm. go and sell my information to someone else who would then potentially poach me away from them. They have my business mm -hmm. already. So mm -hmm. what do you mean when you say that I'm a lead to them? They have all your info. Sure, but, but I've, I'm already their customer. Exactly. So... Same thing with me, Marco. I can send you, you can go on my profile page or whatever, send you a link. You can go on there yourself and get yourself your own insurance without ever having to speak to me. So this sort of then comes back to my point, which was... It's just whatever you want to do in this business, Marco. No, no, hold on, hold on. You, what you just said you know, brings me back to my point about how, how there could even feasibly be a market for doing this long term. I mean, I've known people doing this forever. Right, but how again, how could there I mean I, also new people turn 18 every day. The population's always mm -hmm. growing. So I give you that. Mm -hmm. But even mm -hmm. with that considered, even if I was to mm -hmm. double the number of potential customers, those are not like I Go ahead. I didn't want to interrupt with you. I'm so sorry. Go ahead. Well, You're being very respectful I just with I just I, I just personally say. disagree. Like I I can't wrap my head around the idea that there is not enough insurance agents in my opinion uh if anything, being an insurance salesperson is an antiquated business model that is only ever going to disappear. Like, I don't think 10 years from now, there are going to be any insurance brokers. I think it's going to be all done online. I'm amazed that it's not already all done online. So Marco, so you want, I'll explain something to you. As far as what, this is directly from a carrier, right? Directly from a carrier. They would rather pay us a very, very good commission that have to pay multi multiple millions of dollars of advertising, of commercials, of doing this and that. That's just the way it is. Like, hey, Marco, you're going to save me hundreds of millions of dollars. Here, you'll get 130% of the sale. Go sell them. 
go reach out to that person. Right. I get just, that. Just how you're getting, just how everybody in the world needs, everybody, at least in the U.S., needs to get car insurance, right? There's always a, a surplus of people who need car insurance. There's Why? Because it's mandatory. It's a law, right? Imagine if life insurance was a law. So then let me ridiculous. ask you this. So, so why why has it never run out of car insurance? Why has why, how is there a certain the why is why you know what I mean? It's just you, yeah, I well, feel like you're just too focused on the numbers where the majority of the time I, I understand I'm a big believer in numbers right but when it comes to you asking the question of how I don't understand how there's all these life insurance agents and not enough people you know for you to sell right for you to to reach right. Well, up until this point, there hasn't been a problem with that, right? It might be in 10, 15, 20 years, but up until this point, there hasn't been a problem with that. Like it just hasn't. And then back to your question of I don't, um, why isn't any everything just automated or done online or whatever the case is? Well, Marco, not everybody is tech savvy to go online and get their own life insurance, right? Majority of our customers, at least my customers, are ages 40 and older, right? Majority of my customers would rather me go and sit down with them and explain to them how all the benefits work and help them understand each thing in the insurance policy, what a free look period is, what, you know, what a grace period, all these, all these terms that for them is just French. This is why you get licensed, right? Okay. okay. So there's people who like you who want to go online and just do not have to talk to anybody. I'm that person, right? I can, I'm resourceful. There's people who rather would rather talk to somebody over the phone. There's people who would rather go and you sit in front of them and give them the options and see what they're qualified for. Does that make sense? So that's the way I see it, right? I see it, I, I feel like I, I just have a different perspective of, you know, I've been doing this for sure, a while. Sure. Up until this well, point, thank God it hasn't run out. Let, let me let me say something. It's interesting that you bring up the comparison of car insurance because car insurance, mm -hmm. at least in my anecdotal experience, I, mm -hmm. I don't see car insurance salespeople. And obviously that could be because the premiums are a lot lower. It's not even worth doing as a business, whereas life insurance, it's it's, mm -hmm. It's more, mm -hmm. but how, how come I don't see, how come being a car insurance salesman is not this, mm -hmm. there's not multiple MLM companies centered around being a car insurance salesman as there is a life insurance salesman. That's one of the questions. Also, when it comes to the actual population question, don't get me wrong, I do understand. The population is always growing. There are new people each year having children, so the market for people who want life insurance mm -hmm may continue to grow. Just like with cars, there are new people getting licensed every year. So I get that this number I came up with of 520 potential people to sell to, you could say maybe that renews every single year. But even still, it's like, I, I Googled- And again, what we also Googled, insure kids, you know? Sure, I, I Googled what percent of insurance is sold online. And it said, this is from Ernst & Young, a financial services thing, so I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, it mm -hmm. says, it was 20 in 2018 it was 23 percent of people buying car insurance online and then three years later in 2021 the number went up to 33 percent so that a 10 percent bump home insurance same thing it went from 20 percent to 32 percent so when it comes to life insurance right the stats trend in the direction of more people choosing to buy it online and the, the stats around children being born, which is why most people who do get life insurance get it so that their kids are protected, right? Their kids are the beneficiaries. Less people are having kids now. The birth rate is going down and the amount of people buying insurance online is going up. So in 10 years, how could a model like this work in your opinion? I just, for me, it's, I don't see it ever running out. I, I Me personally, I don't see, because you also have to think about it, um, Marco. Some people in the insurance business are part-time. Some are some-timers, who I like to call it, who write one policy every, you know, so often, and some are full-time, right? If you're not part-time, there's more opportunities for people who are full-time. Does that make sense? Say so the way again. I see it, so if you're a part-time, yeah. right, you're a part-time agent, that means you're working 20 hours a week, whatever the case is. You're only selling... 10 policies a month, let's just say hypothetical, whatever, right? Protect, you already gave that opportunity to a person who's full-time who actually is working a lot more than you. Does that make sense? Okay. So the way, so it's like in my business, in my agency, I have people who are part-time, sometimes and full-time, right? 
And there's a big, obviously the income is different depending on what you are. And sometimes it's not right. But if you're a part-timer, you, you don't expect to protect and help insure as many families as if somebody was full-time. So right off the bat, right off the bat, that all that pool right there, that of people that you left is the opportunity for other people. It's a doggy dog world. First come first serve. Right. And not only that, Marco, just like, just how you're saying a lot of, there's a lot of insurance companies out there but there's not a lot of insurance companies with options. Does that make sense? I, the amount of policies that I've replaced with Prime America, with New York Life, with State Farm, with Allstate, because there's overpriced terms or you know, buy term invested difference or every five year it increases when I can give them something a lot cheaper for the same amount or the same amount of insurance you know, or, or the same price for a lot more insurance, that's more opportunities right there as well. If I go into a home and this guy from Prime America sells that entire family 10 policies in insurance, I already know it's overpriced what they got, right? So then I go in with a company like Mutual Omaha, NLG, whatever company, hey, I could get you the same amount of coverage for this half the price or a third of the price. And what happens, Marco? Those 10 clients, those 10 people who got that life insurance with that client, Unless that agent did a very, very good job to, to establish relationship and, you know, was a very good agent. Because I've gotten that too, where some people just do not want to, you know, switch over to a cheaper company with the same amount of insurance because of that relationship they have with that agent, right? I've gotten it. I've had it happen. But there's 10 clients, right? There's 10 policies right there, 10 clients right there, and so, so on and so forth. That there's, makes a, sense? There, there's a couple of things with that. One, I don't think that the amount of options for insurance is really a factor. I know in your personal experience, you would say it is, but you know, not to sound like a unprofessional, I am an unprofessional mm -hmm. when it comes to insurance, but insurance is insurance. With mm -hmm. save for a few, you know, different uh, benefits of a certain plan over another, I don't think that's such a Major. huge bargaining Major. chip like for most people to consider. I think most people consider price. So maybe you guys have competitive prices, price. I'll give you that. Yeah. Secondly, 100%. when it comes to the uh, people, like them having a person who they trust, to me, what that sounds like is um, in the in the final quarterly report before Blockbuster was shut down, their CEO mm -hmm. said, "We're optimistic about Blockbuster's future because our data reports show that people." enjoy the serendipity of going to Blockbuster and running into their neighbor and they like the experience of buying popcorn and looking at the DVD case. And that turned out to not be true. It turned out what people actually like to do is lay in bed and click one button and be on Netflix. Mm -hmm. So I think when it comes to that personal touch that you talked about, I don't think that that is actually a uh, strong business element to why people make their decisions. I don't think people actually really care about that human element. And then lastly, when it comes to the distribution model, right? This multi-level marketing model. And you talked about people who are part-time, people who are full-time. I've heard people in every MLM company say something to the effect of, well, the people who, the reason that the average earnings are so low, whenever I try to press people about the average, you know, it shows that people made, uh, $200 or $100 a week in the MLM for the whole year before expenses. So realistically, they lost money. The, the answer that I always get is, well, those people were part-time. Those people didn't even bother to sell anything. They joined and they didn't do anything. So it makes the average look bad. But even $200, you know, that's extra income. That's a whole bill for somebody and blah, blah, blah. And there's no real way to verify that. So what I'm concerned with is not so much that there are people who are making money, you are making money, mm -hmm. but you making money doesn't convince me that the overall thing is not a scam because mm -hmm. what are most, what is the experience of most people? How are the people who are below you doing who are, who are full time? Great. Very great. Not in the practice company, but here. Great. So give me an idea of that. Are the people who are working in your downline who are full time putting in the same amount of hours as you and are they make making close to the same amount as you? Uh, just to put into perspective, there's an agent ha has been in the business three months. She just had her best month last month, 30,000. In, in her pocket? 
in her pocket. Right. Well, okay, I mean, so, thirty thousand issue paid, so that would that would mean right. you know probably so, she probably profited twenty, twenty five, twenty three. Got it. So I want people to consider this, right? Mm -hmm. With any MLM company, at when when it's on stage, when people are on stage at their big conventions and whatever, and they're showing the leaders, you know, these hundred or so people that all are the success stories of the company. It's mm -hmm. sort of like that image, that famous image of the iceberg where you see the tiny little bit of the iceberg peeking out and then underneath the water is the huge iceberg. So in, in this example with the MLM companies, the tip of the iceberg is what you see at the conventions, all the success stories. And the iceberg is the thousands and thousands of people who are losing money underneath it mm -hmm. that are propping those people up. So how many people are in your agency and that girl who you said she's doing great, What? Wh mm -hmm. how many people are under her Helping her, like just one, just one, just one. So, so just very little person. of that her was her personally. That was her personally. Yeah. So, so I guess Marco, what I'm trying to get you to understand, right? Why I wanted to do this with you, why I wanted I reached out in the first place, because I come from that traditional MLM, in this case PHP, right? And I had that bad taste. I had that bad taste where every company is the same for me, right? Although most of them are bad right? And quote unquote, but I feel we are very different as far as me, the way I run my agency, the way family first life, Sean Mike runs his no uh, family first life. We are very, very different. And this is not just to sell family first life or to, you know, put them on the map or to praise about them because we make our mistakes too. We, whatever the case is, right. But this is a very, very, very different IMO compared to other insurance companies like PHP, WFG, Primerica, New York Live, wherever you want to talk to, compare it, right? We are very, very different in that sense. Again, I understand how these MLMs, how da, 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 and then you keep mentioning Family First Life being a scam, right? I just want you to elaborate that in a, in, in a way because in what way is it a scam for you, Marco? If I recruit you, Marco, Hey Marco, I'm starting you at 120%. You do not have to you do not have to recruit anybody. You do not have to go and buy leads. If you you work whenever you want to work, right? The income here is commission based. This is how chargebacks work. This is what it takes to do this, to do this, to do this. Again, you do not have to. How am I scamming you? Hey Marco, I'll show you what I know. This is what I know about insurance. And this is what I know about making this much. This is my experience, Marco. Sure. How am I scamming you? You, Marco, how are you getting scammed from us? Or And this, you're independent. So technically, sure. you know, how well, are you getting scammed? Me personally, nobody is scamming me right now. No, I'm, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, if I recruit you, Marco, right? And I say, hey, Marco, you're at 120% with us, right? Um, first of all, in order for you to first join um, FFL, you need to be licensed, right? Yeah. It's none of none that of this. Oh, yeah, none of this. I'm going to train you. I'm going to go sit with all your family, make all the money. You ain't going to get nothing. You won't get the experience. No, right? You first need to be licensed even to just be contracted. You know, you first, and in the meantime, if you're not licensed, we help you get licensed, right? And we will we'll teach you like the insurance no, I get it. I get it. terms, whatever, right? So if I bring you into the business, Marco, and I tell you, okay, let's just say you're a licensed already, right? Okay, you're starting at 120%. This is our lead system, right? We encourage it, but there's no need for you to 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 use it, right? Um, these are these are your contracts that are like here to go. This is how the products work. I don't know if you have the same products at your company. I'm okay. here if you need me. Let, let the me training answer. is here for you. How are you getting scammed? Okay, so let me answer. So mm -hmm. with the reason that my uh, alarm bells are still ringing about FFL mm -hmm. is because mm -hmm. every single red flag box that could be checked mm -hmm. for me has been checked. And I'll tell you what those are. The first is one saying you don't have to recruit. Every MLM that I've ever mm -hmm. experienced says so you don't have to recruit. But the retail opportunity is such a f such a pipe dream that mm -hmm. it's much easier to recruit. So th the recruiting is at least um, implied. The the emphasis on it is at least implied just by looking at the compensation plan. FFL is no different. If I look at the compensation plan, the highest tiers one thirty five, one forty, one forty five 
Mm -hmm. Those are only eligible as builder Mm -hmm. contracts, meaning from Mm -hmm. overrides, people you recruit. So right Mm -hmm. there, the big money is touted as the uh, recruiting opportunity. The next thing. Can I stop? Go ahead. Can I stop you there? Sure, sure. If if you want, we can go like you answer one and answer another one. Yeah, yeah. Again, big money, dude. Show me another company that's giving you 120%. Well, you know, what's funny is when I did my interview with the woman from Primerica back in January, I Uh went and sat with her for two hours on a Sunday. Uh She told me, did Mm -hmm. you know Primerica is responsible for more millionaires than any other company? So she would say the same thing. Well, they've been around forever. But but my point is just that every MLM will say, what other company is doing blank? Marco, I'm being transparent with you. If you can find me another company that's giving you 120%, Go. Why are you here? Why are you getting paid less? Go. If you find a company that's giving you 125, 130 starting, leave. Why are you here? So, Care about your family. Okay, your so pockets. let me answer. Let me let me move on to the next mm. point and answer. Get around okay. to why I think it's a scam. So right mm-hmm. now, what I'm doing is I'm going through the red flags that I okay. see. Okay. Okay. The first okay. red flag was what I just said. The second red flag is that. In that opportunity video that I watched, and this is mm-hmm. uh, verified mm-hmm. by that cease and desist letter I saw from the FTC. Two. What year was it? What year was it? The video? Do you remember? Uh, let me pull it up. Was it 2021 or 2022? It was 2021 because it was before so they got. A, so, yeah. A little bit so outdated. They, yeah. they got, yeah, they got that cease mm-hmm. and desist mm-hmm. uh, at mm-hmm. the end of 2021. So it was 2021. Mm-hmm. So in that opportunity presentation, and this is sort of at the heart of why I say it's a scam, because even though you've successfully convinced me that the Mm -hmm. payout for commission Mm -hmm. is much more generous than the other uh, insurance-based MLM companies like Primerica, Mm -hmm. WFG, which start you out at 25 or 30% commission unless you recruit, uh, you know, you've convinced me that uh, FFL has a better starting amount. However, just like every other MLM, they say you don't have to recruit, but then when you look at just the retail opportunity selling mm-hmm. on your own, it's usually difficult to the point that you would never feasibly achieve the financial freedom and time freedom that they talk about. Even you yourself making great money, you're working, bro, uh, 60 mm-hmm. hours a week, like not no shame, like for the amount of money mm-hmm. you claim to be making, I think that's totally mm-hmm. reasonable. But how many people are doing that based off of the uh, dream they were promised that they're not going to get. So, um, Well, we didn't promise you anything. There's no promises. I would say that that opportunity presentation is the expectation being said. That's the maybe not promise. Maybe I won't use the word promise, but that's very the expe- high expectations. But that's the expectation, expectation that's being said. Different. Yeah, our expectations are a lot higher than other companies. So we're just better. So wait a minute. Mm-hmm. It, but, mm-hmm. but those expectations turned out to not be true because the FTC s- sent... FFL a cease and desist letter saying that all these claims that they were making, FFL, FTC, I have it right here. Uh, they said so you're that going those... based off the video, right? Pardon the me? The compensation video? Pardon you're me? You're going based off the compensation video or which one? Well, actually, the compensation video is in line with these claims, but the three different mm-hmm. examples that were brought up in this FTC letter to, the, to FFL mm-hmm. were posted by independent people to their TikTok, their Instagram, their YouTube... Mm-hmm. And these were independent people saying, um, one for one example, this lady said, last month I did $46,000 issue pay. One month. That's mm-hmm. insane. If you're a hard worker, blah, 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 hashtag financial freedom. Okay. So okay. Um, even without the recruiting element, right, I think there mm-hmm. is a there's some misleading tactics going on here because being an insurance salesperson is a very difficult job. Making actual 100%. money doing this because it, because it's so competitive, and mm-hmm. you know I, again I disagree that there is n- a never ending demand for uh, mm-hmm. insurance salespeople. I don't believe that that is the case. But also when you bring in this recruiting element, it begs the question: Why, if it's already so difficult to make money as an insurance salesperson, why on earth? Would you go and recruit other people who are going to be your competition? Your li- it's it's the opposite of direct sales. You know what I mean? Like, so I'm trying to answer your overall question about why would it be a scam? Well, mm-hmm. the expectations is a huge part of it. You're t- if you're telling people they can make or that they will make uh, mm-hmm. forty thousand in a month, but the numbers don't show that. That doesn't make a lot of sense. I would say that's a scam, and then it's to me it's also a scam. 
the idea that because insurance sales are already so hard, you're going to go recruit mm -hmm. more insurance salespeople who are going to then cannibalize your potential customers. To me, that's also a scam. The multi-level marketing uh, segment itself is, mm -hmm. uh, is a scam because it, it's just mathematically impossible. You're recruiting people who, because you're going to get a higher payout from, you know, you said passive income. You're going to get a higher payout or passive income from having so recruits not. under you. But those recruits are then out there trying to make sales and recruit other people. Like it's just, it's a mathematically impossible equation. People will have to lose. At some point, people will have to lose in order for anyone to profit at the, you know, 100,000, six figure earner a year level. So there's a couple of reasons why I would say so, it's a scam. So Mark, go ahead. So Marco, the beauty about being independent is that your income is a re direct reflection of you. If you're not if you if you're not making what what you want to make, you're not working. I believe that's a cop out because in my opinion, not in my opinion, in my experience, even mm -hmm. people in Primerica say that, bro. How would you feel? You you, you came from PHP, right? Yeah. yeah. PHP, uh -huh. you know for you know for damn well what they say in those meetings. So mm -hmm. how would you how would you So that's why should I so believe you versus believing in someone in people helping Patrick when they say, oh, well, if you lost money in this business, it's because you didn't work hard. You're saying the same thing. No. So why is it different? So no, it's different because we are not PHP. We're actually putting you, the structure is very, very different. We're not putting you in a position where you're going to lose. I mean, yeah, you might have a rough start compared to other people. Other people might have, but we're not starting you at 30%, Marco. We're starting you at 100%. We already agreed on that. You're already you're exactly. starting on, so you're starting on a higher commission, which is great for if people mm -hmm. are making genuine sales. But are people making genuine sales? My opinion, probably not. Because lose, lose your license. Elite, pardon me. Why you lose your license? If you're not making genuine sales, you lose your license. The reason that I say people, I don't think people are actually making sales, is because mm -hmm. there are people like you out there who are hustling mm -hmm. so hard to actually make personal sales. There's comp they're competing with guys like you. They're competing mm -hmm. with online uh, insurance providers where you don't have mm -hmm. to talk to anybody. They're competing mm -hmm. with people who are already happy with their uh, insurance they get from their employer. Mm -hmm. they're, they're competing with the fact that most people are, or more people each year are choosing to get insurance through uh, an online service without having to deal with a broker. There's I just think the idea there. that anyone, even if the commission is 100%, also not factoring in chargebacks and the cost of leads mm -hmm. and the cost of your time and gas and whatever, mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. the idea that anybody, the idea that this is a viable career for anybody Sorry, let it's, me let me let me be more it's not for let anybody. me be more clear let me be more clear with this statement. The idea that being an insurance salesperson, whether there's a recruiting element or not, is a viable career path for mm -hmm. enough people to justify recruiting is insane. It's nonsense. There is we already agreed it's it, being an insurance salesperson is hard, right? Mm -hmm. So again, 100%. why would you want to recruit more people which would then make it even harder? At that point, mm -hmm. you have to recognize you are just enriching yourself while making it harder for that next person because your commission is going up because you got X amount of people under you. But what about those people under you? They are trying to then recruit. So in order, in order for my commissions to go up, they have to be making money because I'm getting that 5%. They don't have to be making money. They have to be making sales. But their sales. No, it's issue paid, my guy. Issue, issue paid, paid, but 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 look. That's money. But that pause, day, pause, that's pause. Business. I agree. Yeah, issue pay. Issue pay. Yeah. But issue pay, even paid in your business. Right, but check this out, mm -hmm. Felipe. Even in the example that we did a little while ago, where we were breaking mm -hmm. down your income, right? It was ten thousand mm -hmm. dollars issue pay. But once we factored in leads, gas, food, the uh, conservative estimate for chargebacks, mm -hmm. it cut that in half. And you're one of the top producers. You're in that top percentile. So mm -hmm. what about for the average person who's below you, who's doing maybe 5000 mm -hmm. to start? They're spending on mm -hmm. leads. They're spending gas and food. They have to factor in chargeback. So are they left with anything that's even feasible? So in my experience, no. You have to understand that if they're doing less, they're not doing as much as me. Does that make sense? If they're part time or full time, yes, not Felipe, everybody starts but my off point is that, that way. it would be mathematically I, I just don't impossible. Understand the question. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. 
I, I'm trying to understand that question as if, as in, as in that person, in order for me to make that 5%, I need to make that, that, that agent, right? Needs to have genuine business that actually pays you, not submitted that's right there, just pending and da da da. No, that actually that right. client and, and this pays is their where, premium. And this is where and the, they made sorry. they made a hundred percent of that sell, right? I didn't take nothing away from them. I didn't take from what they got paid. If they got paid twelve hundred dollars, I'm not getting paid five percent from those twelve hundred dollars. I get it. That company is paying me no, extra five percent. Does that make sense? So so. so I'm not robbing any of their money. I'm not taking away any of their money, right? If you make money, I'm only getting 5% or 10%, I get whatever that. the spread is. My point right? is- So I'm confused. Okay, so when you recruit someone, mm -hmm. I'm guessing they become a customer for you as well, right? No, they don't. They don't have no. to or they don't ever? I personally believe that if you're my agent, if I'm recruiting you, right? You're getting your own insurance policy. How many um, are they buying it through you though? No, they're buying it themselves. They're getting paid themselves. Okay, so sorry, sorry, I, I don't, I don't mean to like. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me go back a bit here. So whenever we recruit an agent, right, or I recruit somebody in my business and my downline, whatever you want to call it, I tell them, practice what you preach, right? I understand if you can't afford it right now, but at least get to that position where you can, right? Yeah. Whatever well, type is... of insurance you feel like getting yourself, whatever you want to just get it or get something eventually, right? Yeah. I'm not I'm not selling you anything. You're not buying it from me. You're buying it directly through the insurance company. Like that's how it is. So yeah, this is this is sort of the idea I hear from every other MLM, which says be a product of the product, right? Like if you're gonna sell Herbalife, you're gonna sell shakes, you should probably mm -hmm. drink the shakes too, so that you at least know, you know, what you're selling to people. So But we're not we're not selling shakes, we're selling life insurance. I know, right? But the... Even if you don't have it, you don't have to have it to be successful in the business. I don't have life insurance for medical reasons, right? But you don't have to have life insurance. It's just if you want to get it, get it. I mean it's encouraged. Like I encourage you to get life insurance. It's very, very important. Something happens to you. You don't want to leave your loved ones behind, you know, with the burden or whatever the case is. Right. But there's no need for you to get, I want to say 95% of the business of, of whatever my agency got paid or whatever it was. Right. It's all clients. Okay. So let me it's say nothing this. that's internal agents. No. Okay. So let me, so let me say this in most, mm -hmm. I'm not going to talk about FFL for a second. In, mm -hmm. in the MLM mm -hmm. companies that I look at, what you, the way it usually goes mm -hmm. is this, right? Somebody joins, they mm -hmm. exhaust all of their warm leads for sales. Mm -hmm. Now they go, okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to recruit people, tell them it's an amazing mm -hmm. opportunity, tell them it's revolutionary. And when they mm -hmm. decide to sign up under me, they're also going to buy through me. They're going to buy either the insurance, like with Primerica or whoever, or they're going to buy I a understand. starter kit, you know, shakes and mm -hmm. whatever, like Herbalife, whatever. Mm -hmm. Or they're going to buy a starter kit. When they mm -hmm. buy from me, that becomes part of my group volume and it's my personal volume because I made a sale. You're following mm -hmm. me, right? hundred percent. Okay, yep. so boom. Now that person, same thing. They exhaust their warm leads within the first month or two. Now they're gonna mm -hmm. go recruit people, tell them it's an amazing opportunity. Mm -hmm. When they recruit them, that becomes their customer and on and on yep. and on. So mm -hmm. while it is possible i think it's unlikely but while it is possible that maybe you personally felipe have a higher level of integrity and you don't look at everybody as a dollar sign and you just want to do good business mm -hmm. I, i'm not saying that's not true but how many mm -hmm. people in ffl would you say are doing it like you because in my opinion the the thing that would be most sensible if i was in your mm -hmm. position and i wanted to climb up the ranks and make that top mm -hmm. level compensation of 145 percent plus all mm -hmm. the bonuses plus all the whatever I would probably just do that. I would recruit people, tell them, hey, I'm going to recruit you. You buy from me. You go recruit people, buy from them. And when this happens, bringing me back to mm -hmm. my why this is a scam, in my opinion, when that happens, mm -hmm. this endless chain of recruitment, it becomes very quickly a mathematically impossible situation where only the mm -hmm. people on top can benefit because all the you know, the money is being funneled upwards and the people who are in the lower levels, they might make a couple sales, but it's not significant enough to let them live, let alone mm -hmm. uh, have passive income. And when you factor in their expenses, their leads, their chargebacks, their gas, mm -hmm. their food, their opportunity, um, they're losing money. 
So does this 100%. make does this all make sense with you? Yeah. Okay. I was there, dude. It, it's not it's there's a reason why PHP, Primerica, and those companies, the majority of their revenue is from recruiting because of that fee. Because it's not a sustainable business, you writing your agents up. Those are liabilities. Does that make sense? Those are liabilities. I hope from the people, at least from the people that I know of, the agencies that I know of, the majority do not do business that way. Where I sit with you and I get you buy the life insurance from me, I get paid. No, right? No, it's just, at least the people that I know, right? I cannot speak for entire FFL. It's not a sustainable business because this is just chargebacks waiting to happen. What if that person quits? Well, then that's what? a great point. That's why that's so why, why companies we're... like Primerica and WFG, hmm. they're like, for example, in my Primerica video, I'm going to show this, mm -hmm. but in their uh, annual report, it says they started out one year with uh, 150,000 or some, close to that number, 150,000 agents. It says they mm -hmm. recruited 50,000 agents. And then at the end of the year report, it said they had 150,000 agents. So wait, you recruited 150,000, oh, no. but so you, you recruited 50,000, but you still ended mm -hmm. up at the same number you had at the beginning. So what does that mean? That means 50,000 people a lot left. Of them. So a that's lot why of there's them. a churn and burn, right? It's a, it's, it's a churn mm -hmm. rate. I don't see how this is different. I don't see how FFL wouldn't have that churn rate. Because yeah, you're right. People aren't paying to join, but they're paying for fees. Like the potential to lose money uh, compared what to fee? what you would make is what still fee, there. Though? Why else would there be a recruiting uh, element to the business if if you want to if you go to want to sell forever? Shit. Hold on. Oh, you're 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 going back to the whole agency thing. Oh, he died. We'll give him a second. Test, test. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Perfect. There you go. Okay. Sorry, my, my AirPods just gave up. No worries. Sorry about that, bro. <laughs> um, so I guess what, what I'm trying to go get you to understand is um, it's it's not the same, right? Okay. There's actual companies out there who are actually legit in, about what they do and about what they believe in, right? Yeah, every dude, I was that guy. I was in PHP before. I believed 100% and everything PHP believed because that's what I was taught, right? That's what I was taught until I opened up my eyes and I was like, okay, Cause dude, the majority, the reason, the way they got me is they sell the hell. They, they sold the dream out of me. Like they sold me the dream. Mm -hmm. They created this culture where, you know, it's a, it's a brotherhood, but everybody's broke. Does yeah. that make sense? Everybody's broke. So this, this is why whenever I came to this business, I saw how different it was. Right. Because dude, even though I went through what, what I went through, I highly believed that life insurance was my calling just because I, I come from a Hispanic family. I don't know if you noticed not Indian or, you know what I mean? Um, I come from a Hispanic family. Nobody was there to educate my, my parents, my mom, my life insurance, my grandparents, and so on and so forth. Right. And then my personal experience of what I went through, life insurance is, is, is what I do now. Now I got to the point where I'm like, I don't want to be doing this forever. I don't want to be selling forever. I don't want like none of it. Like I need to go from the, the cash flow quadrant. Right. I need to go from this to that business side, right? So how can I build a business now to where I, I can afford to not sell the rest of my life and, and, and still have that p passive residual income coming through? Well, FFL show, gives you that option. Now, if you wanna be a personal producer the rest of your life, go ahead. No one's stopping you from doing that, right? And you say, oh, well, they leave that, they leave the, the one, 140, 145 for the quote unquote, you know, hierarchy building, you have to build to get to 135 or 140, right? Dude, I'm full with my 130%, with my 120%, with my 100%. I'm still making a lot of money doing that. And even if I'm not making a lot of money, I'm still cool with 110, 120. Instead of 30%, like, are you kidding me? I'll live with 120%, right? You're already telling me that if I go sell something, I'm going to get 100% of that. First of all, that's a, for me, that was an extreme red flag when, before I joined FFL. Because I've never heard of it before, right? That was a red flag for me. I know you say it's industry standard, 
right? But that was just a red flag for me, right? Because I didn't believe it until I saw it. Does that make sense? So I'm cool. I'm fine with everything that I'm selling is 100%. And no other industry, like car sales, like, you know, PNC, property and casualty, and, and whatever the case is, they're going to give you 100%, man. They're just not, right? If you if you were to get an agent from Family First Life or an agent from PHP, you put them as one at 100% and one at 60%. Who do you think is going to make more money long term? Let's just say they're both selling the same volume. Person that's making 100%, man. So that's the way I see it. Not everybody, not every company, most of them are bad, right? Most of them, even if their intentions aren't bad or whatever, right? Whatever the case is, you know, it's it's just for me, it's more of like, we're, we're, it's just different, right? It's just different whether you want to say it's a red flag, whether you want to say it's it's too good to be true whether you say all these things are checked and whatever the case is, man, dude, I'll take that 120% being a personal producer over that 30%. Sure. All day. So I want to bring it back to this thing you said about like, you don't want to be making sales forever. You eventually want to have mm -hmm. passive income. That mm -hmm. makes total sense to me. Cash flow quadrant. This is something that in mm -hmm. my uh, uh, observations of World Financial, Primerica, they showed the same thing, the cash flow quadrant, mm -hmm. right? The Robert Kiyosaki shit. Mm -hmm. So, have you actually played this out in your mind about mm -hmm. if you were to just try to make mm -hmm. a living from your agencies, your mm -hmm. downlines, the, the, mm -hmm. I, I forgot the word, the spread. Was it, was that the word? Yeah, spread? The spread. Okay. Mm -hmm, so the spread. if you were to just try to make money off the spread, mm -hmm. how many people would you need? How much would they have to be selling? And then here's why I think it is not different than a mm -hmm. Primerica or a PHP or, or a WFG or any other MLM. Here's why mm -hmm. I still think it's going to end up being an endless rec recruitment chain. Because mm -hmm. what happens when the people below you, who are mm -hmm. also taught about the cash flow quadrant, what happens when they decide, you know what, I also don't want to have to make personal sales. I've been making these personal sales so that Felipe mm -hmm. can sit there on the beach and make money. But you know what, now it's my turn. So they mm -hmm. stop making personal sales. Mm -hmm. So now the amount that you're going to get, you know, maybe you got, we're getting 30% from them as the spread, mm -hmm. but now they stop selling and they're just trying to make the override from their downline. Now your mm -hmm. piece from their, from their stuff becomes smaller. And then guess what? The person mm -hmm. under them eventually thinks the same thing. Well, you mm -hmm. know what? I need to have passive income and on and on and on mm -hmm. and on. Mm -hmm. So, so how do you so actually the... see this? How do you actually see this, uh, happening for you? Like break it down for me in, in realistic uh, terms. So, so what is what is the question? What question do you want me to answer? So because how? Okay. So the question I don't is, see an issue. Yeah, go ahead. The question is, you want to eventually not have to make personal sales. You just want passive income, right? Mm -hmm. But don't okay. you see how 100%. the people who you recruit, who are making personal mm -hmm. sales and you're making a spread, don't you see mm -hmm. how eventually they are also going to want passive income? But not everybody wants that. You're talking about, I don't know. So you, you're, you're telling me that I'm not telling you anything. I'm just everybody, asking. every agent wants that. No, they don't. I'm sorry, but they don't. So why wouldn't they? It's their choice. I can't control what they do. Just like if me, if I never wanted to go and build an agency, nobody is forcing me. No, I don't. Nobody's okay. So let's tell me to do that. So I'll let you control this. I want you to walk me through mm -hmm. a hypothetical where you okay. stop working. Sorry. Mm -hmm. You stop make you stop doing personal like uh, production. And you just start trying to make a mm -hmm. make your money from passive income, right? From your agency, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. how many people would you need? How much volume would they have to be doing? And then what happens when they inevitably want to go and make passive income on their own? You say it's not going to happen, but you learned mm -hmm. it from somewhere. They're also going to want to learn it from somewhere. I mean, isn't mm -hmm. that the whole point of having yeah, this uh, a builder? What's it called? Mm -hmm. Isn't builder. it the whole point of having these? builder contracts is so that people can mm -hmm. have passive income. Yeah. So yeah, how, how does it not end up just being an endless chain pyramid? What Come do you on. mean? How, Let's pretend what you, you want to make a hundred K a year, just passive, right? Uh huh. Okay. And your spread is 30%. I, my agency needs to be doing a 30%. Oh, that's, let's say my agency needs to be doing or is that, or am I, am I completely out to lunch with the 30%? What, what, that, what's... That's, a, that's a pretty high spread okay, as so far what, what as overall it? agency. What is that's it? Not 5%, what it is. It's 10%? 5 to 10%, 5 to 10%. Okay, yeah. so if it's 10%. Meaning the majority of the agents are So if it's 10%, your, your downline is going to be needing to do a million dollars, your direct. No, 100,000. 
Yeah, I'm a hundred thousand a month. No less. If if you're telling me I need to make a hundred thousand a year, hundred thousand a year. Uh, if if the spread is ten percent, a million, ninety thousand. Wait a minute. Well, yeah, yeah. They need to. The agency needs to be doing ninety thousand to hundred thousand a month. Yeah. So, so in a, a year, a yeah, year, a little bit over. For a you million. to make a hundred k a year passive, they need to be yeah. generating a million a year for you to have ten mm percent -hmm. of that, right? So yeah. a million a yeah. year they need to be doing. Mm -hmm. So think of yeah. you just think in your mind how many people that there would need to be and how effective they would have to be. Now, what happens mm -hmm. when even one of them decides, you know what, it's ready, it's time for me to kick my feet up and just start collecting passive income, and they do the same thing as you. They stop. They start recruiting. Don't you see how well, eventually? Well, that doesn't. Go that ahead. might that might affect the overall agency, but you got to think about it. At that point, when you have that volume, right? The person that's going to be affected the most is the person that stops doing that. Does that make sense? You have to get to a certain position where you're like, okay, I'm comfortable enough to stop and to focus on this recruiting part because now I, I can see that the income is coming in, right? Consistently every single month, right? Now, if you're a brand new agent and, and you want to stop right away, that's not going to happen. You know, Not I mean? right away. No, but eventually. Yeah, eventually. But dude, it's a never ending cycle in a good way because- <laughs> Everybody is making the you're dude, you're only getting five percent and you're not even taking away none of their commission. They're getting all their commission of what's what they what they sell, right? If they want to get to a point to where like eventually they build a business and they don't have to worry about working ever again and not selling, that all that means, Marco, is that that person recruited people and they that are making money, and that person who recruited that person making money did the same thing over and over and over again. Yes. Question here is you're actually making money. Now, with the few the, with the exception that not everybody's making, you know, 5, 10, 15, 20,000 a month. There's people making 2, 3, 1k. People who tried it didn't work out too, right? But that's the difference, Marco. The difference between a company like PHP, um, WFG and those companies is that the majority of them are broke. Does that make sense? Because of that structure, how uh, they're freaking uplines are getting everything well felipe everything. according according to the ftc letter that they sent to ffl most of the people mm -hmm. in ffl are broke too uh, what what is, what is the numbers that it said we pull it up mm -hmm. sorry all right Let me scroll to the right part here. Um, it says representation about a business opportunity, including earnings claims, violate blah, blah, blah. If they are false, misleading or unsubstantiated and material mm -hmm. to consumers, express and implied earnings claims must be truthful and non-misleading mm -hmm. to avoid being deceptive, which means mm -hmm. that claims about the potential to achieve a wealthy lifestyle, career level income or significant income are false or misleading if business opportunity participants generally do not achieve such results. And we're talking mm -hmm. about significant income, which is sort of- open we're, to And we're also talking about the industry standard overall. Sure. Well, it's and, a, and insurance alone, that's not the case. Does that make okay. sense? So, so it, says, it has to be applied to a whole, right? So it says even truthful testimonials from participants mm -hmm. who earn significant income will likely be misleading unless the mm -hmm. advertiser also makes clear the amount earned or lost by most participants. Now, because this is just the FTC letter to mm -hmm. the uh, to the company, it doesn't say, you would actually be able to answer this for me better. It doesn't actually say what the average income disclosure is of someone in FFL and how many people are in it. But if you, I don't know if you have access to that in back office uh, disclosures, but if we mm -hmm. saw that there was 100,000 people in FFL and the average earnings was mm -hmm. $200 a month, we could very we could come to the same conclusion uh, as Primerica. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you have those numbers, but uh, before we even get to that- What I, wanna... I do know is as far as from the company, sure. the average, the average full-time agent with uh, FFL makes six figures. Okay. But full time, would, but in Primerica, they also say that the average that's Primerica. That's not family first life. Yeah, I'm I know. Sorry. But my point is just that they have There's their no own point. You can't No, We're but listen to me. They life. just have their, every company has their own terminology for what mm -hmm. part time means. For example, mm -hmm. in Primerica, they say that active agents, they base their income disclosure off active mm -hmm. agents, active agents, but active is just their own personal term for agents who have done X amount of business. They're not even factoring in that people they consider inactive, which are people mm -hmm. who just haven't either recruited enough or sold enough. So it's complete mm -hmm. just 
fluff. It's flim flam. It doesn't even mean anything. So in this case of FFL full time, who's to say what it means? You guys aren't paid hourly, so how can so they I'll, say full time? What's what's I'll pull, the? I'll pull you the. I'll pull the numbers right. Okay, bef before well, you not, do that, I can't. Go I want to. I want to say one more thing too, because mm -hmm. I wasn't done talking about what we were talking about before with the with the whole passive income thing, right? Okay. So you know how you talked about how somebody who wants to pursue passive income, they're not going to do it right away. They got to build up sort of like a nest egg before they try to go do that, right? Unless you want to just focus on recruiting and not sure, selling sure. and building. So let me ask you this, right? In your situation, because mm -hmm. I'm not, you're not anyone else. I just have you, Felipe, here. Yeah. So, Appreciate bro, it. let's say you go for another couple of years making killer money uh, with mm -hmm. FFL, just selling, right? Mm -hmm. And now you're ready to kick back and just earn passive income. Let me ask you this. Have you considered, instead of trying to get your passive income through 5% or 10% spreads from FFL, mm -hmm. why don't you mm -hmm. just go put your money in like a, a you know, low-risk, high-yield stock account that's or, or like mm -hmm. uh, ETF or some sort of mutual fund that's going to earn you 10% a year? Why even do it I with do FFL? That. We do that too. And, and, then also, and then also, consider that question for the people below you in FFL. Mm -hmm. Why would mm -hmm. they not just go and do that if they got to the point where they were selling enough insurance that they could go yeah. and do that too? Why would they, they not can. do that? They can. Right. So the idea of pass the I'm I'm saying this to make the point that the idea of passive income with mm -hmm. FFL with being a builder is a completely ridiculous idea. Why? Why well it's, you, it's you just actually like, said why it would best. you start why do you want to do YouTube? Why do I want to do YouTube? Why did you start YouTube? Well, the reason I started YouTube was because mm -hmm. I didn't want to work a conventional job. I just wanted to have fun and make videos. Perfect, right? Wouldn't you agree that every video that goes out, you get money off that? Yep. Exactly, right? So why are you keep making videos over and over again? Why do I keep making videos over and over again? Mm -hmm. Well, there's new stuff to talk about. Exactly, but why though? What I know, I understand. There's new stuff to talk about, but why do it? Why do it at all? It helps people. What are you trying to? What are you trying to achieve? Because I see here, right? You have your legal fees, right? People donate your Patreon and stuff like that, right? So that's your. I'm I'm assuming I don't want, I don't know you that very well. I'm assuming YouTube is is your 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 primary source of income, yep. right? Okay. So now, do you understand that in order for you to make money, you need people? I love this point. I'm I'm so happy you said this. This but, is one of wait, the, wait, this but is, it's not nothing to. I just I'm just trying to get no. I know, to but, the business but look, side of things. Do you realize that there is a big difference between recruiting people into a company where they pay money and you promise them the world versus me putting out free content that people can choose to watch if they want, choose to support me if they want. It, my bi the business model of me making videos is that I make videos. If they are good, they will get viewed. If they get viewed, I will make money. And if people want to support- Who's paying money though? Pardon me? Who's paying money? You Google? said uh, Google? I recruit somebody yeah, Google? and somebody's pays. No, Google? no, I'm sorry. No, yeah. but you, are, are you talking about FFL or are you talking about- I'm talking about how YouTube. Somebody? I'm talking about YouTube. Okay. Google, pay, okay. Google will pay me okay. ad revenue if my videos get views. And in this exactly. case, like a live stream, if people want to support me directly, they can, mm -hmm. they can choose to if they want to. Nobody on this channel, my, my, mm -hmm. bi my YouTube channel is not a business opportunity where I'm getting a cease and desist letter from the government telling me mm -hmm. that I lied to people because I, I gave them an unrealistic expectation. But wouldn't you agree that if you decided to saturate and lie about your own numbers, that's not the right thing to do? If I decided to what, sorry? To, to, like, let's just say you yourself, let's just say you decided to mislead your people uh -huh. in a certain way, You promise, whatever the case is, sure. wouldn't that be unethical for you? Give me an example. How could I do that? Because you're saying that this season, this, you keep going back to this season desist, right? So you have to understand, right? There's always going to be bad people wherever you're at. Again, back to the Apple's argument, right? You can, I cannot control if that person has different values and morals than me, right? I just cannot control that. If that person decided to, to do something, run their agency a certain way, and, you know, do not do genuine business, again, there's always going to be people no matter where you're at. There's always going to be so, those type of people no matter where you're at. So, Felipe, so I, agree, I would agree with that. I would agree with mm -hmm. that if we were talking about any other type of business model than multi-level marketing. But with multi-level marketing, in my mm -hmm. opinion, the business model itself is unethical mm -hmm. because 
it mathematically depends on people, 99% of people losing money in order for 1% to make money. And the way that that could look in FFL is people are trying to pursue, hypothetically, let's say people are mm -hmm. trying to pursue the passive income using mm -hmm. the, uh, I keep forgetting it, builder contract, right? Mm -hmm. So they're recruiting people. They tap mm -hmm. their warm leads, mar their warm market very quickly. So they start mm -hmm. recruiting. Let's say they recruit mm -hmm. five. Those five mm -hmm. recruit five. Those five recruit five. That cycle can only go less mm -hmm. than 13 times before exceeding the entire population of the planet. So how many times can it actually go before you exceed the population of just the United States, for example? It's like a few levels. It's a mathematically impossible chain. That's, that's why it's an unethical model. That's why the comparison between YouTube or other businesses or saying that there's you know, bad actors in every industry, it just doesn't hold up. MLM is unique in that way. In my opinion, mm -hmm. MLM is a legal scam. Mm -hmm. Okay. And yeah, and I will you know what I'll 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 give FFL credit here, which I, mm -hmm. I don't normally do this, but I'll give FFL credit because in your case you are proof if you're being if you've been honest with me thus far, then mm -hmm. and I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt that you are. If you are being honest with me thus far, then you are proof that FFL actually has a way that you can make money from just selling the product. Because every MLM says to me, Oh, you don't have to recruit. I confronted a woman outside a cafe. She was uh, an Amway recruiter trying to recruit this girl sitting next to her. Mm -hmm. And I went into the parking lot. I told her, I saw what you were doing in there. She's like, oh, well, you don't know about Amway. I said, actually, I do know about Amway. I said, you're, it's an, you're trying to recruit people so that you can uh, boost up the money you make. She tried to tell me, oh, well, you know, it's not about recruiting. I said to her, I just watched you. The only reason we're talking right now is because I just watched you try to recruit somebody. So, um. Yeah, I will give FFL credit in that with their compensation, like you payout, just yeah. this hundred percent, like or ninety percent starting contract. That's much more in line with the insurance industry at large, and much much better than WFG and Primerica starting you out at twenty five to or thirty percent, which it only goes up when you recruit people. I will absolutely give it credit for that, but mm -hmm. I think they dangle the carrot of one hundred and thirty five, one hundred and forty five percent in your face and they, they, you know, I don't their care. messaging, their messaging is obviously, uh, you I know, don't care about that. If I'm getting already a hundred percent, 120, I don't care about you it. don't, but most people who are being presented this, think about the 18 year old Hispanic kids who come from mm -hmm. a similar background to you. Like my best mm -hmm. friend when I was 19 Mexican mm -hmm. and he joined world financial group. That was what mm -hmm. led to our, the end of our friendship. Not that's, FFL. that's what Again. sort of led to me doing this. Right. Sure. Not FFL. And if it was FFL, I'm sure he would have had a, a, a better a better time because you know he would I guess what I'm just trying to get you to understand and I'm sorry to interrupt you go ahead right is that it's not the same thing right and I know this is going to sound so dumb right the last month just to let you know right last month in FFL and these are real numbers by the way real numbers after the whole season desist right real numbers FFL right family first life in a month generated People that got paid out to the agents issue paid about $40 million. Okay. How many right? people are in the company? 7,000 writers. Does that make sense? So 7,000 people wrote business. Those $40 million came from those 7,000 agents, right? Yep. So $40 million got distributed between those 7,000 agents. Take the average of that. That average is 5,000 a month. Does that include override? Uh, let me see here. No. No override. Issue pay. Issue pay. So but that would include the override. Because override is issue pay. No, no, no. No, 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 no. No, it's not. Okay. No, it's not. Okay. No. Override is not issue. So when so we, so when I when I'm talking about I did forty thousand issue paid, right? That's what I did personally that got deposited in my bank account issue paid. Because FFL, the way we track our numbers, we track issue paid. We don't track what's submitted, we don't track override. I mean, they track the, you know, obviously the insurance companies track the overrides on your 1099 whatever the case is, because there's no way for them to track the override, right? Because you're independently contracted to the insurance carrier. So right? wait, there's no way for them to track your override? I, I mean, I'm pretty sure they do. I'm probably just speaking out of, you know, whatever the case is. I'm pretty sure they there's a way for them to. Well, there would have to be a way. Out. Otherwise, how would they know yeah. who's getting what? So issue paid means 40 million. It was 39 million, 191. But sure. I, this is like 39 up. million. Round it up to 40, right? So 40 million right? 
issue paid, people got paid $40 million, agents got paid, 7,000 agents wrote business, right? So if you do the math, Marco, that's an average of 5,000 a month. For those who actually sold. But how so many that's people- what are, That's what we're counting, 7,000 people. pause. How many mm. people are in the company buying leads, giving money to FFL, but didn't mm -hmm. actually write any business because there's no customers to, to sell to because the market is so saturated with uh, agents. Dude, again, we're going back to that whole thing again, dude. It's If 7,000 people were able to do it, do you think there's not going to be another people doing it again? Uh, next month, people are going to sell? I, I, I think we have a fundamental maybe disagreement about the idea of mm -hmm. market saturation. Do you believe in mm -hmm. the idea of market saturation? If I live in a town with 1,000 people and mm -hmm. 500 people are selling the I'm same thing, seller. don't you mm -hmm. see how that is harmful to the potential to of each individual seller? Another city. I go to another city. Because we've had that happen to... I, I, and then to your point, right? I, I was, I'll give you credit to that. Here where I'm at, it's a small town. I mean, I don't think it's small. It's 400,000 people, okay. right? It got to a point where we had a lot of agents, not enough leads, right? Okay. So then what did we what did we start telling agents? Yeah, because it there is there's gonna be a saturation, right? Because it's a first come, first serve basis, right? So what do you do? Go to another city, go do a travel trip, go work wherever this business, you could get licensed in every single state if you're independent. I could go to Florida tomorrow, vacation and write business at the same time. Right. Right. So I do give you that credit. There is gonna be an oversaturation, right? But for over 50 years, all these companies that have been around. Man, where have you seen it run out? So if, if it runs out eventually, it's not going to be in my lifetime or my agent's okay, lifetime. Okay, so right. So check this out. With FFL, maybe there isn't a saturation. But mm -hmm. can you think of, imagine this. Imagine all of the people in FFL, Primerica, World Financial mm -hmm. Group, PHP, every other insurance okay. company, online insurance companies. Don't you see how there could you be or there yeah. very reasonably is saturation? But you know what's great about that, though? that not every company is the same, right? There's, so just to put it in perspective, right? If there's a Primerica next to a, a FFL and a PHP business, right? You're a customer, you're a client, you're looking for life insurance. You know, you know yourself, these three businesses sell life insurance, right? What does a viable person do? I wanna go look at my options. I wanna see what options, I, I shop, just like I'm, if I'm shopping for car insurance, I'm not just gonna go with one company, yeah, agree, I'm gonna go with multiple. Agree. So, so I'm going to go to Primerica. Hey, I'm looking for 100000 a 30-year term. What's the quote? What price? 50 bucks. Let's say $100 sure. a month. No, we I go agree. To We're on the same page. Okay, so that's the beauty about the business is that there's competition. And just because there's multiple insurance companies right next to each other doesn't mean you have the best product. There's always going to be somebody with the best product with the best insurance, with the best benefits, with the best everything. Absolutely. Right? So I feel sorry. I, I, me personally, if you're in these other companies that are with the same business model, only have one, are you, where you're capped and you only have one insurance carrier, you, you only sell what they sell, Transamerica, or you only sell what Primerica sells or whatever the case is, go somewhere where there's options. So let me say this. I agree with you. More options for the consumer is a good thing. But yep. what happens when the consumer is the customer and the customers slash consumers slash uh -huh. distributors, they're the same people, right? I'm giving, I'm, mm -hmm. think of a company, maybe not FFL, a company mm -hmm. where I get recruited, think I'm gonna make a lot of money. I buy insurance mm -hmm. for my upline. Now I'm going to recruit people at a 30% commission, 25% commission, recruiting mm -hmm. them, selling them insurance. It sucks for that. It, it, it's right. So it those sucks. are the people who are being mm -hmm. scammed through this endless chain recruitment model you said in your own words it keeps going again and again and over and over right I so feel, yeah I feel, don't so I, yeah. so when i say it's a scam don't look at it from the point of the consumer who's shopping around mm -hmm. for insurance because the way that 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 actually plays out in real life is mm -hmm. usually they're not people are not calling up primerica hey man I'm, I'm looking for insurance primerica is so aggressive in who they're selling it to and in my opinion they are selling it to the people who are in it so yeah. even your point about yeah. options for the customers sort of falls flat because who are the customers? Well, come well, they up. are come the recruiters. Up. They are the, the workforce. Well, you have to understand. You, you also have to understand that they, whoever they sold to, they sold to family, that family's family, that family's family, whatever the case is down the line, right? I've come across in this business a bunch of different policies from Primerica, 
trans america you know uh you know you know whatever other new york life american whatever you other companies man i don't know who they are who they sold to who the agent is i just know that and and i always tell this to the customer to, to the customer the client i don't blame the agent because that's all they have to offer you so they're, they're, they they weren't doing nothing bad they were just selling what they were selling if i work for state farm all i'm going to offer you is state farm right I don't blame. I never blame but the bro, customer. bro, you're still. I never you're, blame you're the client. Still, you're still repeating basically the. It's mm -hmm. better for the customer because the customer has more options. What I'm trying to explain to you mm -hmm. is that the customers of MLM mm -hmm. products are usually the distributors of those products. There's no. Think mm -hmm. of a shampoo MLM. There's no real yeah, women out here it. actually being like, hmm, let me try that shampoo. Mm -hmm. It's oh, the only people buying it are the people in the company. I would say the majority, yes. The majority yeah, absolutely. For, with the other companies, majority. 100%. So I, I feel like I agree with you 100% where I know from PHP, from you know my experience, every recruit you recruited had to get life insurance and you're the one selling it to them, right? So I 100% agree with you where, yeah, a majority, most of the companies work that way, the way you're, you're explaining it to yeah. Their customer is their own people. Like sure, it's sure. Their, their client is the customer. And right? with FFL, that might not be the case. It seems to me that there's a lot of uh, precedent for saying that that's not the case. However, it's FFL not. has a different element that those other companies don't have, which is the leads. What? And I'm guessing, I, I don't know, because mm -hmm. I've never been mm -hmm. in the company. So, you know, you, I'll, I'll... I'll be transparent with sure, you. Answer I'll, me the I'll, questions. I'll 100% be honest with I'll, you. I'll um, defer to your authority on the situation because mm -hmm. you know it better than I do. I'll admit that. Mm -hmm. My guess is, based on the letter that I saw from the FTC to FFL, the mm -hmm. uh, business opportunity video that I saw from 2021, mm -hmm. FFL is a company, I'm just giving you what my impression is, mm -hmm. FFL is a company where they tell you it's an amazing business opportunity, they mm -hmm. do compete, they, they are competitive with the amount of compensation they give you for actually selling insurance, but the mm -hmm. way that they make back that money that they would have mm -hmm. otherwise, like Primerica, they're only going to give you, mm -hmm. what, 30, 25%. So FFL, in my opinion, they go, okay, you know what, we'll give 100%, but we'll also mm -hmm. sell them, we'll pressure them to sell, to buy these leads, so we make our money back that way. In my opinion, it's just a leads, uh, mm -hmm. you know, like I said I very, at the very beginning, whether they're getting their money from withholding your okay. commission or they're getting the money from the leads, it's the same shit. It's still I 100% understand. I, I, the, big, the big, big factor, though, of what you said is pressure. Yeah. Pressure. Nobody's pressured. Maybe in your like maybe that. you're not pressuring. No. No, but I've dude, I've traveled to multiple offices. Nobody is pressured. It's encouraged. Hey, if you don't have anybody to sell to, if you don't have a war market, here are some leads. Here are the options of leads that you can buy from and see and we'll teach you the script. We'll teach you everything you need to know. And it's gonna be a 50-50 whether they either you close it or you don't close it. Right? It's a 50-50. We don't guarantee you. You buy this lead, you're gonna close it. There's no guarantees. But no, that's the just implication, like life, right? No, there is no implication. See, I, I think this is where I'm trying to get you to to understand, comprehend. I'm sorry, that came out very wrong. Sorry if it came out disrespectful. Sure. I, I where I'm trying to get you to understand is that there's no implication that if you buy these leads, you're gonna be successful, and that if you buy these leads, you're guaranteed to get something off of it, right? Now you have to work. Right, you have to, you just have to, right? Uh, if you buy a hundred leads, as far as my return ratio, right? If I buy a hundred leads, I'm booking fifteen to twenty appointments. Also depends on the quality of lead, right? But nobody is forcing me. Nobody is pressuring me to buy leads. Nobody's. It's just an option that you have. If if you don't have nowhere else to go, everybody, your war market. You don't have a war market. Here's a here's our CRM. Here are the leads that we have to offer. Each different price point. Obviously, the higher the price point, the higher the intent the lead is, meaning that if you buy a $30 lead, although also it's not true because I bought in leads where they're $100 and they suck. And I bought in leads where they're $10, no, $5 and I do a little bit and I do a lot better with these, right? So it just depends on where you're at. Does that make sense? So sure. nobody is pressuring, you know, nobody is pressuring anybody to buy leads it's encouraged yeah it is if you if you don't have a warm market and i'm sorry if i'm being repetitive but it's no, a big key factor a lot of these other companies do do that where you're very pressured you're right like i was pressured to go to an office even though i was broke i didn't even know how i was going to make it there 
but because I I was loyal and I have that brotherhood, right? I don't want to be away from that, but because I believe in the system, that I was pressured into doing that, right? Mm -hmm. So, dude, when I tell when we tell you here that you're independent, you are independent, man. That doesn't mean that we're gonna leave you alone. You have the option to be left alone. Hey, you want to do your own thing? Great. I have an agent right now. I don't hear from that person in a month. They submit business, and I'm like, oh, hey, what's right? The like, well, hey, man, just, when it comes to the leads, I would, I would to play sort of you know, give you the benefit mm -hmm. of the doubt, I would actually hope that if I'm paying for leads, they are getting me something. Like I would hope that if someone's encouraging me to buy leads, there is some mm -hmm. guarantee. I know you said it depends and you no can never, you can never really know, but I would, but that's the thing is like, I would, then don't buy I them. would want there to be, you know what I mean? So then don't buy them, man. So it's, if there's no guarantee, if, if somebody is guaranteeing you something, don't buy them. Right. Well, Felipe, you, you seem in my opinion, you seem to be, um, you don't seem to be one of these MLM characters that I'm used to seeing who sort mm -hmm. of repeats the script. Like you watch the video with Alejandro and mm -hmm. he, I felt like I told him, I said to him in that conversation, like, is this even really you? Like, I felt like I was just talking to Patrick. Like the whole thing was a pitch. Yeah, like, I if, I, if you had, I if you cut that. out all my parts of that, mm -hmm. of that discussion, it would have basically been exactly what you see on one of their zoom opportunity calls. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like just the same, appealing to uh people's minority background he's talked about being mexican and you know we don't learn about this and Start blah, blah, blah. Bashing, I'm like, so i mean yeah. you don't appear to be one of these type of characters who is just reading off the script you do in my opinion appear to be a guy who has good intentions and i hope you see that i have good i do 100 yeah I, yeah i understand i get it man i get it like so i get you 100 percent. um i you know i will still say that I, i'm sort of on the back foot here because I don't have access to FFL's compensation. Uh, sorry, mm -hmm. I don't have access to FFL's income disclosure. I also don't mm -hmm. have access to their reports that say how many people are in the company. So I'm not able to do a calculation right now that shows, okay, look, there's 100,000 people and mm -hmm. uh, you know the average earnings was $100 a year, which would... I think, I think it's posted online, man. Yeah, I tried to find it before this. Okay. Just a Let little me bit see before. if I can find it just so we can get that sure. out of the way. Here, but regardless, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. I will say you do appear to be a guy who has a better, um, uh, you know, a better uh, set of intentions than most people. And mm -hmm. I don't know if I asked you directly at any point, but is do you have people under you? Like you said you did, were doing a lot of business based on what mm -hmm. you described, you, how you spend your hours. It seems that you are doing almost 100%. Uh, so now your own yeah time. so now so last year right it was the night like 90 percent of my income was on me right and then i had people coming in like recruits coming in people just reaching out and coming in and me trying to teach them you know what i was doing right and um but it just started growing i just started growing now i'm more focused on you know the the building not necessarily i want to say i'm more focused but now i'm balancing the two right so this year has been totally different now this year is it's it's 50 50 right so then you know i don't work as much i still work right i still i still hustle you know i still grind but i don't like as far as like how you said you know that i was 60 hours a week probably i'm still full time 30 40 hours you know but nowhere near to where i was you know what i mean um but yeah i, I now i'm starting to build yeah i'm starting to grow my agency you know thankfully you know everybody in my agency is making money i can you know with a few exceptions there's always going to be a few exceptions but you know, whether people believe it or not, whatever the case is, for me, it doesn't really matter. I just know what's in my heart and my agents, sorry, my voice cracked there. And okay. I just, and I just know my agents know what their, what their income is. And if anybody doesn't believe me, I'm, I'm glad to show them that, you know, privately the real numbers, how it is. Right. But I mean, hundred percent, man, I, I, I strongly believe in life insurance. I strongly believe that everybody should have life insurance if you can get it. Right. And, you know, and if I can present the opportunity to somebody else, present it in a way where like, Hey, there's this option for you. This is, it's, it's been working out great for me. It might be different for you, but here it is for you. That's how I come across everything. Right. Cause I've learned, I've learned throughout, I've learned mistakes. I've learned from my mistakes. So if I'm approaching you, Marco, right. Let's just say you're a relative of mine or a friend of mine. Hey, Marco, I, I don't know if you know, I've been doing family first life for quite some time. This is what I'm making now. It's, it's I'm working hella hard, right? I, I, I know you, I haven't been spending time with you. I'm working hella hard, but this is just the opportunity, right? And this is how it works. 
in case you are interested in ever doing it or joining it, here it is, man. Sure. Does that make sense? I'm not, I'm not in that business of forcing you and come bringing you in and, and no, bro. Like, right. I've, I've been there. That's what I'm trying to, I've been there. That's what I'm trying to tell you. So, I mean, I will conclude with this. Mm -hmm. I think that the compensation structure payout, if I can, if I can bring this on the Mm -hmm. screen here, um, and Sorry. I have the 2022 real numbers for you as well. Okay. The actual numbers. Sure. So I'm just looking at this image here that is on the... Sorry, I'm blocking your face here, uh, Felipe. I'm looking at this image You're here good, man. that's on the left side of the screen. And what we can see here is that there are two ways to advance in FFL. Mm-hmm. There is producer contracts and there is builder contracts. Mm-hmm. We looked at this before you and I got on the call. You can max. Okay. You can reach a max level of 130% commission for personal production. You can also get there, in my opinion, more attainably getting to that 130% by reaching $250,000 in total hierarchy issue paid. I mean- Issue paid is money that's being paid out to agents, okay? Not okay. just submitted business, because in other companies, understood. it's just submitted. Understood, just understood, submitted. Okay. understood. But again, uh, so- it's, my, No, it's very important though. No, it is, it is. So my, my point because is just that- yeah, my point is just important. that it's more it's going to be more feasible, in my opinion, to have two hundred and fifty thousand dollars of hierarchy issue paid yeah. than to have sixty thousand dollars of personal issue paid. That's just my opinion. And then 100%. the top three levels of the compensation plan, you can only mm-hmm. get to using hierarchy issue paid, meaning mm-hmm. your recruits uh, issue pay. So mm-hmm. to me, in my opinion, I would have no complaints about this company. If it was mm-hmm. just a through and through insurance company paying those competitive mm-hmm. rates without this recruiting element, in my opinion, when you have a company where there is a recruiting arm to it and that recruiting arm has earnings potential that is much higher than the mm-hmm. actual retailing or personal sales potential, mm-hmm. to me, it is inevitable that the people in the company, once they, once they struggle enough with selling, once they're not able to sell anymore, that they will mm-hmm. just turn to selling the dream and trying to recruit people. That is my opinion. That's how I see it go 100%. time and time again. Mm-hmm. And I, I mean, you know, I and watch I the, that. Yeah. I wa- you know, I respect that. And, and I think that it turns people who even start with the best of intentions into people mm-hmm. who just want to get to that top point and get on stage and get, you know, worshipped mm-hmm. at their, at their convention. So they, yeah. they will just tell people whatever so that they can build that downline. So, you know, that is still, and also, yeah, again, no, I get again, it. The downline thing, the, the, trying to reach that high level, it, it's just cut and dry multi level marketing. If you are going to recruit enough people to do that type of issue pay where you can reach that top level, it is going to be this endless chain where 99% of people are going to lose. It's just a fact, not even mm-hmm. factoring in the, um, well, especially in the insurance fact- industry. Uh, yeah, especially when you factor in the um, leads mm-hmm. if people are buying leads. Mm-hmm. So I would have no complaints about FFL. Do they do they have a much more competitive uh, payout commission for your actual sales? Sure, but this recruiting arm uh, still makes mm-hmm. it a company that I wouldn't recommend. I would say to people, if you're looking for insurance, go find a. a a company that doesn't have a multi-level marketing component or just do it mm-hmm. online. That's what I think that's the way of the future. So, so that's, that's what I, that's the final comment. What would separate I that though? Pardon what me? would separate, what would separate them from, let's just say you go and find a company that offers you a hundred percent, right? Yep. hundred percent. What separates, like why not come with the FFL? Why go with that company instead? Because there's no multi-level They're both paying marketing you the same. arm. That don't matter. They're still paying you the no, same it, and, and you're getting producer bonuses. So I'm you're looking getting, at getting residuals. You have to understand, Felipe, my perspective comes from mm-hmm. what is the net impact of this company on mm-hmm. people in general, not just for someone in your position. In your position, you want to do what's going to make you the most money. I understand that. FFL, maybe you'll make more from your own personal sales. But I mm-hmm. have to consider also what is the cost of that? How many people are going to lose money in order for, for Felipe to make money? To me, that's I can't justify it. It is... In order for me to make, so so, so that's the difference. I I feel like you still not, that's the difference. In order for you to move up here, your, 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 your people have to be getting paid. Right. But those people, that's what we count, but that's what we count to get paid paid business. But those people can get paid from Mm -hmm. selling to their own recruits, right? 
but it's i mean yes they no. can yes so and that's and, other, and that's I mean, exact and that's what just makes it in my opinion at the end of the day that's mm -hmm. what makes it the same as primerica regardless i know the commission rate is not nearly as good as ffl mm -hmm. but you're mm -hmm. gonna recruit you want to reach that highest level you got to recruit mm -hmm. when you recruit someone you're gonna sell to them they're gonna go recruit someone they're gonna sell to them okay and but on you still and didn't on answer my go. question though of okay. what's why would somebody go to a com another company 100 percent, and why not ffl 100 percent? if you're just producing why not? You're just a producer. All you care is just producing. So if you're just going to so, produce, so hey, yeah, hey, you're if you go with this company, they're giving you 100. percent That's all they're gonna give you. Sure. But if you go with this company, they're giving you 100. percent Right. Plus producer bonuses, plus right. annual bonuses, plus carrier bonuses. Sure. What's what's the bad thing? Okay, I'll answer. You might not like my answer though. Go for it. Go for it. I think any person who mm -hmm. understands the implications of what multi-level marketing does to the vast majority of people, 99%. I don't think any person who understands that would mm -hmm. join a company that has that multi-level marketing element, even mm -hmm. if they thought they personally were going to make more. Uh, sorry, even if they thought they were going to make money. You know, you asked... It, it, that's, just, that's, uh, that's just a weird answer, man, because there's, you're not losing anything as a producer. What are you losing? You're just producing. That's all you care about. Who if you're cares just if they have a, a if you're just if they, producing, cares, right? This, who cares if this they is have sort a, of a leg. Of it's sort of build. the same question, Felipe, as uh -huh. when people ask me. You know, hey, my sister is in uh, Herbalife. Is it bad mm -hmm. if I just want to support her and buy the uh, product mm -hmm. from her? I don't want to join. My answer is yes, because you are st you're a you're prolonging her failure. Mm -hmm. She mm -hmm. is going to lose, and B you are still contributing primary herbalife still gets that you know a piece of whatever uh mm -hmm. you buy off of your sister so you're mm -hmm. still contributing to this system where 99 mm -hmm. percent of people lose i would say the same thing for you if you are just producing well you're still producing on behalf of a company that has this endless chain recruiting but model. it's not on behalf of a company it's on behalf of the insurance carriers you're just using family first life for the compensation for the bonuses so, but bro, bonuses. but Family That's First it. Life gets paid, no? You get paid directly from the insurance. Just company. answer it. Uh, the way they get paid, I don't know how they get paid. Yeah, so, I, I can so, test how they get come paid. Come on, you do know, Felipe. You're a smart guy. When you sell, when you are mm -hmm. part of Family First Life and you sell mm -hmm. a policy to somebody mm -hmm. to a customer, Family First yeah. Life gets money. Yes or no? Uh, yeah, whatever the difference right. is. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's the same thing as my Herbalife example, where if you buy from your sister, you're still putting money into this closed loop pyramid scheme where people, 99% of people are going to lose. Why would that matter to you as a producer? If you're just again, there to Again, as a producer, it shouldn't uh -huh. matter to you. But if you're a human being with a soul and you know what the company structure does to most of the people that are in it, it shouldn't even matter to well, you. That extra 30%... Maybe you mm -hmm. would only make 100% at a non-MLM insurance company. That extra 30% mm -hmm. shouldn't mm -hmm. be worth it to you when you know what's happening to most of the people within the system, in my opinion. Yeah, that, and the people, that, system, the people that reach the top of MLM companies, the mm -hmm. very, very top, in, in many mm -hmm. cases, I believe are sociopaths or psychopaths. I truly believe mm -hmm. that because those are people I, I, who, mm -hmm. who see the... Those are people who see the uh, amount of people being recruited and the amount of people leaving and the amount of people losing money and they don't give a fuck because they're making mm -hmm. money. And so your question reminds me a little bit of this idea where it's like, why would you as a producer care? Well, you know what? If your only goal was to enrich yourself, you wouldn't. Mm -hmm. The insurance company pays FFL the difference in the contracts that I have mm -hmm. and with each different, and different carrier, right? Mm -hmm. FFL is not making any money off of me of as far as are. what I sell. Well, yeah, they're they're getting paid paid off the difference because they brought me on board, right? So they're but getting you paid. Didn't, you still didn't go back to answering my question of how that's better. Uh, if 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 I tell you, hey Marco, if you come over here, you're generating the same amount of things. You're guaranteed better for this, who? Plus, so Felipe, better bonus. for who? For, for the, the producer. For, you're for the talking producer about producing. for the world. Okay, I'll, you're talking about producing. Yeah, I'll concede the point. It is better for the producer than if in this. So example. then check this out. So then check this out. So then check this out. Then if it's better for the producer then wouldn't you want to recruit more producers to be, to produce? It's better for the producer in your position. 
based on my, what do you mean in my position your follow-up question wouldn't it be better for mm -hmm. them for the more producers to come in well now that would yeah. contribute to my earlier point of the market saturation mm -hmm. no eventually it's just going to become uh, an endless chain you're sort of setting yourself up down either either road you go down whether it's mm -hmm. okay well i'll recruit more people more producers since it's better for the producer well now that's called a pyramid scheme and if you're saying well it's better for me why because i'm yeah why if they're making their own money i'm making my money <laughs> how is it a scam or a scheme <laughs> if you're making money i i'm just i don't understand i just i i guess we're on two different levels of of hey marco here is this company, man. Here's your contract. Here's your thing. You're independent. Go sell. You make all your money that you need to make and do your thing. I hope you make a lot of money and I hope you never get exposed to the people who are uh, losing money. I've, I hope you never I hope you never have to get a grasp I've been there. on I've been there, the man. amount of people that are losing money with, with FFL. I really do I really mean the that. amount of people that lose money with FFL. Well, this business is not for everybody. Just how it's not. Well, and I make that very clear. You've, you've checked another. You've business. checked another MLM bingo box, which is mm -hmm. they'll they'll say when you first is, do you uh, think do a YouTube meeting, is for everybody? And if I can do this, you can do this, and then they'll say do it's you not think, for everybody. Do you think YouTube is for everybody? Nope. I, I never say if I can do this, you can do this. This is what I'm doing. I'm this not talking about you. I'm me. just talking about this. Is you've you've checked one of the boxes of what mm -hmm. I hear from every MLM. They'll they'll somebody will say you know. Um, it's not for yeah. everybody. It only works if I you work, but that's not how it usually starts. And you are not a representative. You, sorry, you are not a spokesperson on behalf of the whole company, right? You're just you. You're just Felipe. Well, when I watched mm -hmm. that opportunity video. Well, Sean Mike says it agrees exactly the same thing. He's the whole company. Do you mean Sean Mike's the guy who received the CEO. letter from the FTC saying that yeah. you got to stop your people making false income claims a year and a half ago? Yeah, just, just if you have a company, you can't control what everybody does. Where'd they learn it from? Learn what from? Where'd they learn those false uh, income claims from? How come Apple doesn't do that? How come there's, I'm sure there's bad apples that work I'm at Apple. I'm pretty sure they do. How come well, there's not see, people at you, Apple lying and saying, I made 40K this month? I'm pretty sure they do if they're, if they're on commissions. They do? I've, I've known people from AT&T, from these companies, like, hey, bro, I made this much money doing sales. Are people who constantly try to recruit me, and yeah. it's not true. But there's always, I'm, what I'm trying to get you to understand, there's always going to be those people that you, do you think Sean Mike is over here like you know what's funny though, Felipe? Is bad apples mm -hmm. when there's bad apples, there's mm -hmm. usually you know uh, so not enough of them, not enough of them to make the FTC think that this is a company wide problem. We should probably send them uh, a cease and desist letter. So what do you do when there's bad apples? This is the you I, you eliminate I think, them. I think it's the wrong That's question. Simple, man. This is not. It's it's a bad tree. It's not that there's bad apples. It's that there's a bad tree. No, it's, no, it's just not. You, I don't think it's fair because you still keep comparing PHP, WFG, nice things okay, to Family First Life. Okay, I can compare any other MLM company with FFL if you like. Because you're going based off of the traditional, the old MLM, the way things are being run and all this stuff. It's just, dude, Shawn Mike, Shawn Mike says it himself. If you My find friend, something better, it's not go. old. P FFL got this cease and desist letter a year and a half ago, bro. We're not talking about that. We're talking so about now we're not talking MLMs about that. in general. Okay, so I said MLM. Felipe, I followed you, up with MLM. I'm sort of, I'm sort of, uh, I'm sort of fighting mm -hmm. an unwinnable war here. When I bring up another company, you say, but that's not FFL. Then when I do bring, when I do bring mm -hmm. up FFL, you say, well, but that's not me, or well, but there's bad apples, or well, that's not Sean Mike. So what am I really? How how can I even really meet you uh, on the same page? Uh, if, if that's what do you're you think do it's every fair time. if somebody judges you based off of somebody what somebody else did in your team absolutely if i'm the boss if i own a restaurant and mm -hmm. one of my chefs spits in the food mm -hmm. i didn't do it mm -hmm. but i as the boss do have to be responsible and that's the that's, exact that's if you're the boss exactly so let's just say you had everybody was their own bosses everybody was independent you had an independent company and and then whatever you want to call it right do you think it's fair if that person who is 1099, who is independent, a sole proprietor, whatever they did, and then be, just because they did that, now they're judging you, do you think that's fair? Well, it's sort of hard for me to apply to my own situation because I'm not in a situation like that. No, we're, we're talking about hypotheticals. We're talking about if you yourself had an independent contracting company and you hire independent contractors or, you, or independent contractors are in your yeah. company, Yeah. if that person does something, do you think that's fair to just say, 
hey, just because this person did this, right. that means that you are the same. So it's yeah, not if, fair, man. Okay, my answer we, is this. If one person- They made did, their mistakes. Sure, if one person and, did something bad, yeah. I don't think the company should have to uh, be publicly scrutinized for that. Mm -hmm. But with FFL, enough people mm -hmm. did it that they yeah. that the FTC decided, well, this has to be a company-wide issue. They must have learned it from somewhere. So let's send mm -hmm. them a cease and desist letter. Yeah, so then what happens? Hey, guys, what the heck is going on? Why is this why is this happening? Right? So then what happens? That season But you realize he happens, just did that to and cover his own ass, bro. Who did? Sean. The you, CEO. The three examples are right there from those Instagram stories. So you're telling me that Sean Mike went on there. And on those Instagram stories said, Hey, I made this much sell from this much. No, man, you can't. You can't. Are you listening? Are you listening to yourself right now, Felipe? I just I'm said just so... I just said to you, the FTC mm -hmm. sent the letter to Sean Mike because he's the CEO mm -hmm. of the company, right? Okay. He, they said, yeah. Hey Sean Mike, your people, your independent contractors with FFL mm -hmm. are saying these uh deceptive earnings claims. Mm -hmm. You need to get them to mm -hmm. stop doing it. So of course he's gonna go and say, Hey guys, stop doing that officially. But they got it. Where'd they get it from? He only said it to them. He only reeled it in because he was now in danger of losing his business or being fined. But how are you supposed to know? How are you, how are you supposed to know what your independent contract is doing at a large company scale? I'll answer. Ready? Yeah. Because go for it. they trained them. Nobody's, as far as my training and the training that I've received from other companies, from the same business that I'm from the same company I'm in and other agencies, nowhere did they tell me, hey, put this here, put this here, put that you're making this much here, lie. Well, you know what's the tough part for me is when trying to be objective about this company, you can at any moment say, well, that wasn't my experience and I have no way to rebut that. Sure, maybe it wasn't your experience, but can you accept Think the about idea at least can you at mm -hmm. least accept the idea that maybe just because you don't operate a certain way and maybe just because mm -hmm. certain things didn't happen mm -hmm. to you doesn't mean that mm -hmm. they're not happening. I just think for me, it's very hard to believe knowing who Sean Mike is and what he values and stuff like that. It's very hard to believe that somebody in the company would go around training people to do that. And if he found out that that happened, I'm pretty sure that person no longer is here. I just find it very, very difficult. All right. Well, right? I mean, uh, it's just, it's just, it's just the way he, again, I don't I know if I'm don't, going to you know say I mean? something that satisfies your, um, inquiry I'm right just, now. It's just because you still have that bad MLM taste and you're still comparing them with, I'm just trying to make you understand that FFL, there's a reason why we're called the rogue IMO, right? Because we're, we're disrupting everything. We're doing everything so different. And I hate to just sound very cliche of trying to market how, I, no, there's, I always, I, I'm even still, I'm keeping my business options open because I already know if something in the future ever comes up, that's better than FFL. I'm taking, I'm taking that hundred percent over this, right? I'm not brainwashed. I'm not manipulated. I'm not nothing. If something else comes up in the future, that's better than FFL. I'm taking it hundred percent, right? Cause I'm, I'm a, I mean, if that's going to make me more money then yeah. Does that make sense? So I just don't think it's fair that just because certain people did something in your business. You got to think about it. For the FTC, they don't care if it's one person, two people, or three people. You do know that, right? If it's just one person doing it, you're you're done, right? Even if it's a large company as a whole with 20,000 writers FFL had and almost did half a million, you do the math. Does that make sense? You do the math on what the average is, right? But it's very hard as a business model, as a principle, where you that is actually somewhere, that is actually like, we encourage that, you know, that's okay. Any right person in their right mind would understand that's not, that's not okay. Does that make Like, I don't know if I'm making sense. <laughs> that's just where I'm coming from. Yeah. I mean, you also mentioned, just, you also brought up one of these things that I love to hear, which is that I have some, I personally have some bad taste in my mouth or it's my own personal experience mm -hmm. that has soured me to the idea of MLM. It's not, mm -hmm. it's not the case. I'm sorry. And I, I wanted to give you an opportunity also to, formulate mm -hmm. your YouTube. You were, you were mm -hmm. going to bring up another YouTube uh, analogy. I, I, I didn't mean to cut you off there. I wanted to give you your opportunity to say what you wanted to say about that or ask. No, it, uh, I mean, I, I probably forgot, but, but yeah, man, I, like, I don't mean to like attack in any way or be, you know, whatever the case is. I do understand that most MLM companies are, are, are not doing the right thing 
and unfortunately these do these people do get sucked in like i did and many people that i know did and you just don't know any better especially if you're 18 19. a lot of these companies bro if you if you actually look into it they're a bunch of 18 19 year olds 20 year olds so so can i ask you this felipe because i think maybe yeah, go we've gone about this whole thing all wrong and i'm sorry to take mm -hmm. up so much of your time i no nah, i'm cool man i made time for you trust me appreciate it so let <laughs> yeah. me ask you this bro what do you mm -hmm. think about other MLMs is bad? What don't you like about the other MLMs? Um, the, the, I believe that life insurance and the other MLMs, whatever the case is, even though there's not the best product, I do believe that's, that's a good thing, right? Everybody needs life insurance, right? The thing for me that's bad is more of like the, first of all, the, comp the compensation, right? Where it's at, where it's starting, right? And pretty much the way they feed on not, first of all, you can join, you can pay this fee, Another big thing, they have to pay for these freaking events and they're already not making any money, right? They're already struggling as it is. So for me, that's not okay, right? Um, another thing that I can probably say that's not okay for me, as far as my opinion, my personal opinion, right, is they force you to go out and sell to your friends and family and recruit. Like that's being forced upon. And if, and if, and if you don't do that, we're not working with you. We're not taking you seriously. Does that make sense? That for me is a big no. Right. And um, unfortunately, when you're in those ages, you don't know any better than just to listen. And because you view them as a mentor, you view them as whoever. Right. And, you know, I don't blame the newest agent. I only blame them once they understand what they're doing. Right. That's when I blame them. Right. Once they understand what they're doing, what business they're in, then that's when I actually, you know, OK, you have some fault in it. So that makes sense. one of the things that frustrated me so much when I was talking to Alejandro was that mm -hmm. he kept talking about the insurance industry. And I said from the outset that I was mm -hmm. not against insurance in any way or life insurance. I was mm -hmm. against multi-level marketing. And so when I, what I heard you say there, one of the first things was about insurance. Again, mm -hmm. I don't have a problem with insurance. I don't mm -hmm. believe that you are in an insurance company. I believe you are in a multi-level marketing company mm -hmm. that sells okay. insurance, just like I okay. believe there are multi-level marketing companies that sell shampoo, but those are not mm -hmm. shampoo companies. So mm -hmm. you talked about the, the few different points you brought up. I could think of an analogous thing that is happening mm -hmm. right so, now in FFL that makes it just mm -hmm. as bad in my opinion. So, okay. um, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I get it. It's different things, different ways, but I mean, that's just from what I've seen around me and what others have seen around me and whatever the case is. But yeah, man, I feel, I feel, it's still I, I still feel that the the family first life is one of the few good companies out there right one of the few good companies that actually do care about their agents and actually do care about their clients and insurance and all that stuff now i mean this is just me probably you know probably not knowing there's better companies out there but as far as from what i've seen my values my morals whatever i believe in you know the case i i at least go with a good conscience when i go into a client's home okay i have these options and the good thing is that you can go and get contracted with other insurance companies independently and still be with family first life, right? Cause they don't own you. They don't own your book of business. So for example, you Marco, if you tell me, Hey, Felipe, there's this company here that offers this product that you don't have, go get, go get contract. I can go and hit up that company and get contracted. Right. But the reason why I'm here is just because of just the producer bonuses that I receive every single month. If you do certain thing, you get these bonuses and whatever the case is. So, I mean, that's just just that's just my two cents, my opinion. Sure. But yeah, man, I, I guess one thing we can definitely agree on is the the the, tr the traditional MLMs. Most of the MLMs are are there to 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 benefit the person at the top. Sure, for sure. Mm -hmm. Well, look, man, mm -hmm. I really appreciate your time, and I'm sorry to take so much of it. And I, uh, You're good. I think You're good. I appreciate we had a good uh, respectful conversation, so I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. And I appreciate you too. And sorry if I, you know, I'm all over the place. No, you're good. I tend to do that. Like I have one idea here, then I have another idea there. Sure. And I just go all over the place, but man, I do appreciate you having me on. Like I do appreciate you. And I am a big advocate of what you do as far as, you know, infiltrating these companies and actually seeing the light. I do appreciate that. But again, you know, um, really, really, if you really dive in and do your homework and actually get to sit with people that are in the business and sure. not at least with family first life, you'll see that it's actually, it is different. Sure. You know what I mean? I, it is I, I don't know if you've seen my video on my channel debating uh, this guy, Gary Cornegay. He's one of the top people in Primerica. I'm from Primerica. Yeah, yeah. Have you seen that? 
Yeah, I have. Yeah, I think, <laughs> I think that's a really interesting one because that guy actually yeah. found my channel and called in on a Zoom uh, during a live stream one night because he said he was a big fan of what I do because uh -huh. all these other MLM companies were giving Primerica a bad name. Yeah, no. Um, kind of crazy, You right? cannot compare me with that guy. You cannot. Uh, please do not ever compare me with that guy. <laughs> <laughs> please right, bro, do not ever. It. Two different sets of morals and values. All right, bro. I appreciate it. And I do appreciate you having me, Marco. Yes, sir. So, yeah. Thank awesome. you, bro. Take Have care, man. Night. Have a good night. Yeah, and thanks, you chat, even though, I don't know. I don't even get to read the chat. <laughs> no, I, I don't even look at it when I'm talking to somebody. <laughs> All right, man. All, All right, right bro, you have a good night, brother. Peace Take out. care. Well, big shout out to Felipe, y'all. We did it. We did it. Goddamn, goddamn. That was a lot, wasn't it? That was a lot. But much respect to Felipe for coming on. Uh, you know... Whether it's Dominic Izzo or Alejandro or Felipe or sorry to tell you guys, I have a uh, I have a debate with a guy from World Financial Group coming up on Friday. First time I'll ever have somebody from World Financial Group calling in. Um, it's just there's a lot, but I gotta give it up. You know, Felipe, great. He seemed like a good dude. Seems like a good guy. Good intentions, and uh, I I don't agree with the the with what he's doing, but he appears to be, you know, uh, he appears to have the best intentions. So I will say, I don't think he's a bad guy. Um, yeah, I wish, you know, what can you do? What can you do? Felipe, Felipe in the chat. I appreciate you, man. I really do. Uh, wow. All right. Well, we took a look at family first life on this stream and I wish I had their, uh, income disclosure and their report that says how many people are in the company. If anyone can find it and wants to send me that, uh, please do. Please let me know. And that'll be, uh, I'll definitely look at that on another stream. But um, uh, also, I saw somebody in the chat say Marco doesn't understand the insurance industry. That's true. I don't understand the insurance industry. I think I get the basics of it, but I don't know the uh, intricacies of it. And I think the fact that I can say that, that I, I'm not an expert on insurance, sort of galvanizes my points about MLM because you don't need to understand insurance to understand MLM. Just like you don't need to understand shampoo or protein powder or any of the other things MLM companies sell in order to understand why it is bad. Um, so apologies if I get lost on some of the jargon or some of the industry standards regarding insurance. Um, again, insurance isn't my forte. Um, Multi-level marketing is my forte. So appreciate you. And also, Felipe, you were very respectful, and I appreciate that, sir. I want to thank some of the people who donated during that conversation with Felipe. There was Miss Amanda said, I'm late, but here's my cult tax. Thank you, Miss Amanda. Dirty Dan said, FFL is the worst. People lose thousands buying old recycled leads. Uh, Dirty Dan, based on what I saw online before I did the stream, all of the, uh, sorry, a lot of the negative reviews said uh, basically the same thing. Digital Acetone said, are leads for insurance or for the business opportunity? I believe they would be for insurance. Yeah, damn. Shout out to Felipe, man. Beyond says, here's the thing. If a company sells insurance but also sold nuclear warheads alongside, I don't care if the insurance sales are legit. It's the warheads I'm worried about. And I guess this is sort of something I, I don't know if I articulated it well enough to Felipe. I've said this in my videos before. I look at multi-level marketing like a dry cleaner. It's a legitimate dry cleaners. They'll go and press your clothes if you want. And in the basement of the dry cleaners, there's a meth lab producing hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of meth every week, every day. Is it a legitimate dry cleaner? Yes. But what's the real money maker? The meth lab underneath. And I, when it came to my conversation with Felipe, Felipe kept talking about how amazing the dry cleaner was, how amazingly uh, generous the dry cleaner was in paying its staff. But underneath that, it is still a recruiting machine, which also uh, doesn't win any favor by having this additional leads business attached to it. 
yes, maybe it is a, a, an insurance company where you can provide families with life insurance and they'll pay you a generous commission as the person who wrote, you know, who, who made the sale. But from the company's point of view, where are they making their money from? From people being recruited and buying the insurance from their upline and from people buying leads. So, you know, I, I look at the net impact of a company on society and on the majority of the people that uh, are part of it, not just how it benefits the top people. You know, I'm sure if you told David Imonitier that any of the MLM companies that he's were in were scams, he would show you his uh, Rolls Royce and say, well, it's obviously not a scam. You know, it obviously works. You just don't work or something like that. So the fact that there are people who do well in these companies isn't proof that the companies are not bad. It's just proof that uh, it, it's, it's top weighted. It's top heavy. Um, but to the credit of FFL, like I said, it does seem that they actually do have a, uh, a more viable route to making a living just from selling the product as opposed to recruiting. Whereas in other companies, it's absolutely completely undisputed. It's, it's so obvious from the jump that the only way you're going to make anything even close to what they talk about in their opportunity presentations is recruiting. Is that also still true in FFL? Because the top three uh, levels of the compensation plan you can only get from recruiting? Yes, but prior to that, there is more money to be made from just selling. So, you know, I give them that. <sighs> you know, definitely praying for Felipe. I think he's a good dude, man. I, I really think he is. But, like, yeah, the road to hell is paved with good intentions, as they say. Alfonso says, hey, Marco, where can I go sell insurance that you would approve of that would be a good fit? Um, Alfonso, any, any insurance company that pays you a competitive commission, usually around 100% or more, where there are not overrides being paid on multiple levels of agents. One of the things I should have brought up to um, Felipe was this. I said this during my uh, debate with Alejandro. And this is true of Primerica, WFG, PHP. These companies are paying overrides, which means override means the amount of commission you are getting from the sales that people in your downline did. These companies like WFG, this was WFG just recently got in trouble with uh, the financial regulator in Ontario. It talks about how WFG in the notice, it talks about how WFG is paying out commissions on paying out overrides on 10 levels, 10 different levels. Let me see if I can find it in the thing here. Can't find it. WFG is paying overrides on 10 different levels. So that means that if you make a sale, 10 dudes above you also got a piece of that commission. Does that seem fair? Well, in standard non-multi-level marketing insurance companies, the override levels that there are only go one level. And these are reserved for cases where you are still learning the ropes. And so maybe you shared, like similar to real, real estate, where if you're a new realtor, you might share a listing with a more experienced realtor just to learn the ropes. And you guys will share that commission. But then when you go off and you become an independent realtor, when you make sales of houses, there are not 10 other realtors who are being paid off of your work. That would be ridiculous. And yet, that's what these companies, WFG, Primerica, PHP, and uh, I have no reason to believe that FFL doesn't do this either. That's what all these insurance-based MLMs do. So, the, you know, I said to Alejandro, the degrees of separation between you and any person on this planet is five. I might know a guy who I went to high school with whose mom works for the United Nations and she knows a translator in Africa who knows some tour guide in some remote part of Africa who knows the tribal leader of that tribe. Between me and some tribe leader in Africa on the other side of the world who I would never have a hope of just ever randomly meeting one day, the degrees of separation is five. 
And yet MLM companies like WFG, Primerica, PHP are paying a piece of a commission on 10 levels. Think about it. There is somebody being paid off your work who you will never even meet, who lives in some other country. Does that seem fair to you? <laughs> so uh, coming back to Alfonso's question, yeah, any MLM, any non-MLM insurance company I think would be a better bet. Um, what, so what's the name of a company that doesn't recruit? I don't know, go do your own Googling. Again, people use this uh, false equivocation fallacy where they talk about, well, doesn't every company recruit? Understand what I mean by the word recruit. I don't mean recruit like the way they say, well, the military recruits, is that a pyramid scheme? Every business, every job recruits new people. What I'm talking about is an endless chain recruiting model where you are incentivized to recruit more people under you because that's how you make more money. That is not true of McDonald's and the military and whatever other business you can think of. And then those recruits go recruit more recruits who recruit more recruits. That's not happening in the military. That's not happening at McDonald's. Well, everything is a pyramid. McDonald's, you have the manager, the assistant manager, the cashier, the janitor. No, that's not a pyramid scheme. Maybe it has a hierarchical formation where there is, it's a pyramid shape, you could say, but it is not a pyramid scheme because the people in that ecosystem at McDonald's, manager, assistant manager, cashier, those people are not moving up the levels based on how many more people they recruit. You don't go from being a cashier at McDonald's to being the assistant manager because you recruited six other cashiers who sold 10 Big Macs each, and then that counted towards their personal volume. So then you had a 100 group volume, which then translated to your rank of cashier, and then you were able to get paid this much, and then you qualified. Nonsense. It's fucking nonsense. So um, please don't mistake the word recruit when I say recruit. Please do not conflate that with uh, standard onboarding and hiring that regular legitimate companies do. When I say recruit, this is a common tactic that people in MLMs use to try to discredit me. They'll say, well, every company recruits and they, they hinge on the, the meaning of the word, the definition of the word. So I've explained what I mean. All right. If a company has a disclaimer saying it's not a scam, it's a scam. I agree, even Stevens. Thank you also to um, fuck to Amanda for joining the Patreon. Really appreciate that, Amanda. Thank you so much. This is classic. Says beyond people deliberately conflating customers with employees. Yeah. Recruitment is also not the same as being hired. Says Taisha. Yes, so true. And and that's where they try to conflate. Um, you know, mili militaries don't win wars by recruiting more soldiers who recruit more soldiers who recruit more soldiers. Who then unlock more powerful guns based on how many people they have underneath them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. I'm reading your guys' comments. Alfonso says, I'm getting out of here. I like Marco. I'm a goon. Alfonso, I think you might, might have some more, uh, more to do. Drone18, your channel has inspired me to start my own podcast. That means a lot. Thank you, Drone18. That's beautiful, man. Omero Guerrero also says, most insurance brokerages that don't recruit... Pay very low commissions or low salaries with free leads and low comp plans. If you want the comfy paycheck, that's a good route to start. I don't recruit. Pay very low commissions. If you So how is it a comfy paycheck if, if it's low commission? I also saw some questionable comments from you, Omero Guerrero. I don't know where you stand even. Um. Maximilian says, I don't think it's a coincidence. Life insurance is associated with MLMs. They aren't stupid. I agree. I, I think I've said this before, but I believe the reason that uh, insurance-based MLMs, the reason there's so many of them, PHP, FFL, World Financial Group, uh, Primerica, I'm sure there's others I can't think of, but that right there is a lot. Um, I think the reason that those are really clever is be there's layers to it, right? So the first layer is, 
you actually do have to get a government issued license, a state license in order to sell insurance. When you have that license and you're a licensed insurance broker, that already just on its face appears to be more legitimate than, for example, let's compare it to what MLMs used to commonly look like, uh, LuLaRoe, women meeting up in somebody's living room in their regular civilian clothes to exchange leggings or Tupperware or sex toys or something like that. So already it looks more legitimate when, you're, when you can say you're an actual in, a licensed insurance broker. Licensed insurance brokers usually dress more professionally too. That is sort of an appeal to authority where if you see a guy in a lab coat in a hospital, you're going to assume he's someone that uh, knows what the fuck he's doing there. Whereas if you see a guy walking around uh, in the hospital with no shirts and shorts, you're going to assume that he's some escaped patient. So insurance uh, agents, by their nature, usually dress in business attire. This also adds to the uh, appearance that they are, what they are doing is more legitimate, even though they very well may be just using a, uh, doing multi-level marketing. Um, and then also they, you know, uh, the other layer to it is that there is this emotional uh, appeal, right? Every MLM company will try some variation of this tactic where they try to argue the idea that what they do is so necessary. For example, if, if I sold a uh, shampoo, if I was a shampoo MLM, my message would be, there's always going to be a need for what we do because your hair never stops growing. If I sold protein shakes, my messaging would be something like, there's always going to be a need for what we do because you always want to, you know, your fitness is important at every stage of your life and you need to be strong and this product helps you, you know, get strong. With life insurance, it's, a, it's an even more emotional sell. Because when I did the Primerica meeting with that lady back in January, she showed me this video. And it's like, imagine that you're married and you and your wife both make $4,000 a month, but then suddenly your spouse dies and your household income is cut in half. This is why you need life insurance. <laughs> and people already are familiar with the idea of life insurance. They know its value. So it's just, it, it, it feels... It feels better to people than, uh, hey, buy my shampoo. Um, hey, girl, check out these leggings. It, you know, there's layers to it. I think it's very clever. I also talked about in my ACN video, I talked about why um, ACN was clever because they are selling intangible services, right? They're selling electricity, phone plans, Wi-Fi, things that you can't see with your eyeballs. You can't hold it in your hand. Insurance is the same thing, and that's a very smart move from the company's uh, perspective because they don't have to spend money developing these uh, products. They don't have to go order shampoo and slap their label on it and have this overhead. An insurance-based MLM, they're just a, a third-party retailer who is selling policies that are sold by, you know, like Felipe talked about, they have all these options. Yeah, they're selling uh, insurance as a middleman sort of from these bigger uh, policy issuers. It's like having two middlemen actually because there's the company that's the policy issuer, Traveler's Insurance or whatever, and then there's FFL who's getting their piece because they're buying it from the company, and then there's the recruit like Felipe who is getting it through FFL but also through that company, and then there's the customer. Whereas you could skip these entire two middlemen and just go straight, you know, to the uh, to the company as a customer using an online platform or or something else. So, anyways, many layers to its cleverness. Many layers. Uh, so many layers, frankly. Alex, what up, Alex FPV? Listening on the drive home from the job. Disgusting. Uh, Sam here. What up? All right. Let me see what y'all talking about. Kendra says, not only do you not raise in rank based on how many cashiers you recruit if you're a manager at McDonald's, but there's a limit to how many you can hire. Exactly. Just like there's a limit to how many McDonald's's can be uh, in the same neighborhood. Saturation. Um, hashtag team salaried yet. 
Bomero says, I was in FFL for two years. They have a very sketchy, they have very sketchy practices. I had to walk away. But out of all the other MLM companies, you can make great money without recruiting because they have great carriers. I don't deny that. And I think that's a, a very clever uh, tool that they use having these uh, competitive commissions. I think that's a very clever tool they use to have uh, skilled salespeople join them and stay with them and defend them. And of course, they make that money back by pushing these expensive leads. Um. Maximilian says, it's the human connection aspect as well. There's also a reason why health and life products are associated with MLMs. Totally. Yep. I mean, you know what's sad? I've never said this before. So my grandma died last year of um, cancer. And while she was dying, you know, we found out that she had terminal stage four cancer and she was dead a month later. During this month, my aunt, so my grandma's daughter, was trying everything she could to cure the cancer, right? She was almost delirious and I felt so bad for her because she was scared of losing her mom. And of course, totally understandable. And I saw products one day when I went over there. I saw products on the counter. I forget what company they were from. It was, it was an MLM product. And uh, I, I mentioned it, but of course, I wasn't going to get into an argument with my aunt because I knew the emotional state she was in. I knew she was just trying to throw the kitchen sink at my grandma's cancer and trying to use anything she could. And somebody sold her this fucking product. That was obviously just snake oil, food coloring and nonsense. And, um, you know, she was like, you know, it makes me feel better about me trying to cure my mom's cancer. So just don't even say anything about it. I was like, all right, all right. But, you know, that's at any other stage in her life. Would she have ever bought? No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. And the, the I. The concept of life insurance is a inherently emotional one at its best. Why does someone want life insurance? So that if they die, the people they care about can be protected. It's maybe the most emotional thing you can have. Um, Felipe, you're a good dude. Juan says, when you're at LOA, you're considered as a solicitor on the behalf of a marketing company like WFG. That's how these companies offer all these crazy levels. No insurance company pays generational overrides. So true. So true. That's what I talked about before. LOA. Let me look with that up. Leave of absence. Is that LOA insurance? Let me be more specific. Uh, LOA means licensed only agent or self-employed independent contractors. Yeah, do that, bro. Hey, uh, Felipe, go fucking do that. Go do that. If FFL can negotiate with the big insurance companies to have 160% in order for them to be able to afford to give you 130, why don't you go negotiate with the big insurance companies on your own? Get an even bigger fucking commission and start your own brokerage. That'd be beautiful. I don't know if that's possible, but yeah. All right. I, I didn't mean for this stream to hit a four hour, uh, four hours. It's too long, but uh, appreciate y'all. Um, love you guys. I'll see you on Friday. Really appreciate the support. If you want to join the Patreon. Uh, I'm recruiting y'all. Uh-oh, I'm recruiting y'all. I'm recruiting y'all. If you, if you would like to optionally support me out of the good of your heart because you see the value that I'm providing to society with this content, um, Consider joining, consider uh, subscribing to the Patreon, whatever. Appreciate you guys. Uh, I'll talk to you later. Peace. See you on Friday. Peace. Oh, let me hit him with this too. Obama. Billions and billions. Marco. Oh, shit. I got to do this. You're broke. You're fucking poor. Do you like me? <laughs> I'm not a loser. Thanks, Marco. 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 Play it some more, Marco. Obama. I'm in, in a reverse psychology, Felipe. It was just, it was a bad analogy on your part. I have to say when you tried to say like, I've heard that a million times too. People be like, but Marco, don't you rely on people coming to your channel for you to be successful on YouTube? Not at all the same thing, but anyways, appreciate you guys. Um, appreciate you, Felipe. Thank you. Peace out.